All right, great friends. Hey, what's going on? It's Thursday. We got a busy show coming up for you, really busy show. So I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to make things quick. So stick with me because if it's not for these companies and these partnerships, we don't do this every day. We don't all get to hang out together every day. We don't have a big boat trip coming up on March 30th. If it's not for these companies that make this show happen every single day, Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Alex will throw up the QR code. Again, simply, you want to play blackjack, poker, and other table games, have amazing food at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, seven minutes south of downtown San Diego, and in a smoke-free environment, you got the best location, the best games, the best food, all in one place, and it's a card room. It's not a giant, massive casino with a concert hall and a wannabe pool scene and a buffet. It's a small place where you can go and play blackjack and poker and have amazing food. Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Any problems with gambling, you call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hey, welcome back to the show, Mushroom Life. And what we learned yesterday was their website is life, L-Y-F-E, lifebrew.com. This is their mushroom coffee. And you can save 20% when you use our promo code K-L-Y-F-E, K-Life 20, K-Life 20. Alex, um, I had a cup of this coffee yesterday when Brett was on the show. Oh mm -hmm. my God, was I focused for the rest of the day. It's not going to get mm -hmm. you high. It's not going to get you, you know, this is not like psychedelic mushrooms. What I did today, by the way, is I took the uh, mushroom life and I took the one scoop because it comes with this little scooper. I put the one scoop into my actual caffeinated coffee in the morning. So not only did I get the caffeine, but I also got the focus um, and by the way, I played two and a half hours of pickleball last night. Most of these guys that I play with, they're all sore. I feel fine because um, Brett talked about it being an anti-inflammatory as well. So as Brett said yesterday, when they send you the Mushroom Life product, uh, they're going to throw in a bunch of other little goodies for you. Mushroom Life. And the website is Life Brew, L-Y-F-E, lifebrew.com. K-Life 20 is going to save you 20% off right there with Mushroom Life. Welcome back to the show. Glad you guys are here. Hey, how about our people? at Blender's Eyewear. I had somebody today send me a message and said, hey, you've got me turned on to Blender's. I'll never wear another pair of sunglasses again because the quality is super high, polarized lenses, but also um, they look cool, they're fashionable. And the thing is, they're priced so right that you can buy two, three, four pairs and you can have a variety of different kinds of Blender's sunglasses. Stop spending 250 or 300 bucks for a pair of sunglasses that you're gonna break or you're gonna lose and then you're gonna be furious. Get yourself like four or five pairs of Blender's for the same price. Use our code Kaplan, you save 20%. If you go to their social media, Blender's, or you go to their website, they'll save you 15%. They're giving us the opportunity to have everybody save 20%. So I hope on the boat trip on, on March 30th, I hope to see everybody wearing blender sunglasses. And let me thank our friends at Prize Picks. Alex, listen to this. On Prize Picks, uh, I am so blown away by last night by what happened. Um, so this is great. So I took the James Harden play where they discounted him like 85%. I've got him today to score 3.14 points. Win. Last night, I put him together with De'Aaron Fox and Alex Ovechkin, so basketball and hockey. Mm -hmm. Ovechkin had seven shots on goal last night. Darren Fox only had one three pointer, but I only needed them to combine for five and a half. Ovechkin carried the day. So I've already got the Ovechkin Fox win. Now tonight, James Harden will score more than three and a half points and I'll, I'll win that three to one. I'll turn 20 bucks into 60 bucks. Now today I've already had Jalen Brunson and Connor Bernard because I'm playing these hockey basketball specials. They went for more than five and a half, three point shots and, and shots on goal. So I've already won that half of it today. Luke Littler the 17 year old dart throwing phenom, my man, I need three and a half or more one eighties and I'm going to win. I'm going to win two plays today on prize picks and I'm going to have a nice day. Um, download the prize picks app, use our code. Great friends. They'll match your first deposit hundred percent up to hundred dollars. Get in the game with me, Alex and Browner and 3 million other people playing prize picks, download that app and use our code. Great friends. Let's get to the show. Hey, great friends. What's going on? Thursday, Kaplan and crew, Grande, Brown Man, Seven Mile Casino Studios, and just getting onto the airwaves of 1090, blasting all throughout Southern California on traditional radio. We'll be all over TV tonight on Cox Your View, Channel 4 San Diego's our home base, but 
Orange County, LA, Santa Barbara will be there. And uh, of course, worldwide on YouTube, make sure you're getting involved in our YouTube chat. Give a like. Let's see if we can't get up uh, those likes today. And then of course, uh, on your own time on audio podcast. So listen, we're just getting onto the airwaves. We are in the seven mile casino studios. And while we're on the air here today, San Diego state is playing UNLV in the first round of the mountain West conference tournament. So that game is going on. I know a lot of people are going to be watching, uh, possibly listening. So here's what I would suggest everybody do. Put your TV on over here and then put us on, on YouTube over here. And this way you can be watching the game and you can be talking to us and you can be interacting in the live YouTube chat and we could all be doing, you know, multitasking in the middle of the day. So, uh, fellas, I would say today the place to start is with the Padres who made some major news yesterday. And, um, as we get ready for the Padres to take off, to go to Korea, to take on the Dodgers in this opening series of the season, the Padres, in my opinion, shocked us all yesterday uh, because to go out and make a move was something that I frankly didn't think they were going to do. Now, look, um, they didn't go out and spend $30 million a year on somebody. They made a very smart economic move for the next couple of years for this team. They added an arm to their pitching rotation that might actually elevate to their number one starter. We'll go through the numbers here in a second. We'll take a look at who this player is. But I don't expect everybody who's watching and listening to go, oh, I know that name. I mean, he's awesome. That guy's great. We're, we're not talking about Garrett Cole's name here, okay? We're not talking about, uh, you know, Walker Bueller's name here. I'm not, We're not talking about, to me, what is a superstar household name. But when we look at the numbers of what this guy has accomplished in his Major League Baseball career, how long the Padres have control of this guy's contract, and how inexpensive this player is, I will say this, uh, all credit goes to the Padres because this is a great, great move, uh, or at least it seems to be a great move on paper. So no detail, just kind of global uh, thought right there. Grande Brown, man, good afternoon. What would you guys think about this? Did this shock you yesterday? The timing. The timing shocked me. That's about it. Just because, and we'll, we'll we'll get into the details of it all. Like the the Padres were literally, and if you've been to Peoria, which me and Scott have been numerous times, there's these picnic tables right outside the gym at the Peoria Padres training complex. And from all reports, the team and their significant others were all sitting there, waiting to board the buses to go to Korea. Mm-hmm. So the timing of it all is is weird. Like it took so long. Uh, but then there's reports that AJ Preller and his trusted scouts were at the White Sox game on Tuesday night watching Dylan C actually pitch. And I was like, all right, let's do this thing. He had a good game. Let's go get him. So the timing surprised me. The move did not surprise me. I'm happy with the move. Uh, first thoughts is listen, to, to simplify it, right handed Blake Snell. Just pitches a little bit more. That's kind of how I see it. Ton of strikeouts. Uh, although last year Blake Snell had a very good ERA. Normally a, a little bit on the higher end of an ERA, but a guy that you can count on to be there every single time you need him to pitch to go for a bunch of innings and to strike out a bunch of dudes. And every now and then he'll get roughed up. That's kind of what we're getting. But I, I like the move a lot. I think that the Padres have solidified their starting rotation as to one of the best in baseball. All right, there you go. Uh, We'll get, like I said, get into the deeper details here in a second because if it wasn't for a move of this magnitude, I definitely would not be starting with the Padres today. Uh, Big Brown, what'd you think about this? I mean, you're a White Sox fan, so you must probably have some exposure to this guy, Dylan Cease. I knew that they were trying to trade Dylan Cease. I had no idea that the Padres were a prospective partner. And so you have to take your hat off to the general manager. You have to take your hat off to the general manager for pulling off a deal to a team that nobody saw coming and for having the prospects that the White Sox desired to make this deal happen. The White Sox are cleaning house. So they're going to move a couple of more guys, maybe uh, bats, whether it be doing a trade deadline or at some point up into that. But I love it. I absolutely love it. I think it gives you one of the best starting rotations in baseball, which the Padres have had one of the more solid rotations in baseball for the last couple of years. So. This takes something 
off the plate of you, Darvish. We don't have to worry about you, Darvish, being the number one at that age. We don't have to worry about Joe Musgrove being the number one due to some of the injuries that he's had. Joe Musgrove is consistent. Dylan Cease is consistent. You just got Michael King, who now went from being possibly your third or your second starter to your fourth starter. What getting Cease does to the rotation, it gives it, it gives it more options and it gives it more length. So if we get the Dylan Cease before everything but last year, we in business. We in business. We in business. So again, but, but, and everything comes with the but because everybody has one like an opinion. Pitching wasn't the, really the problem last year, especially not starting pitching. So I don't expect for the numbers overall from an aspect of pitching, I don't expect for that to drop. I expected that to look the same as it did last year. Because, again, you had a Cy Young Award winner. Dylan Seats has that in his repertoire. He can throw like Blake Snell. Yeah, the I problem mean, is I, hitting. Yeah, well, I, I think that um, in losing Blake Snell, who, by the way, what is what, what is, are you doing? What, what is he thinking right now? Like, what like, you, like, where is he in oh. his life right now, and what is he thinking? Because the baseball season, the the actual opening day of the Padres, what what is the date of that that opening day game, Alex? Referring to which game? The Korea not, game? Yeah, no, no, not the Korea game. The actual first game. March twenty eighth. Okay, so March twenty eighth. Today is March fourteenth. Pie day. Right. Oh, now that makes sense. Now it makes sense. Oh, my God. I'm so dumb. God, I'm Lord. dumb. I am so dumb. Don't be so hard on yourself. I know. I know. I've actually, I've been working on trying to stop telling myself how dumb I am and how fat I am. I've been right. working on, I've been trying to work on like, you know, be nicer to yourself. Like look in the mirror and just say to yourself, hey, you know what? For 54, you look pretty good. Like in comparison to, uh, you take 154 year old guys, you line them up. <laughs> You're you top twenty. What are you, you doing? You, well, are you here's doing? What, well, really? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell myself to not be so dumb. You know, because yesterday, here's the deal. Yesterday on Prize Picks, they had James Harden at three point one four points, <laughs> and I was like, I don't really get it. And you said to me, Well, yeah, they made an eighty six percent discount, and I went, Okay, eighty six percent discount gets down to three point one four but there's got to be some sort of connection to 3.14. And I didn't even know the date. I looked at my phone to see what the date was. Today's March 14th. And then Alex says it's pie day. And then all of a sudden it occurred to me, the reason you're getting James Harden for 3.14 points is because today is pie day. But a lot of people don't know that. I Nobody so, would have got, I, so, you know, maybe I'm not as dumb as I think. You're right. You're squeeze. You, you, listen, you're, you're, you're being extra hard on yourself in an area where no one, would even know that that's a thing. Okay. So lighten up, brother. Well, lighten up. Now, right. in fact, when it comes to staring at yourself in the mirror, yeah. welcome to being a human. <laughs> <laughs> okay? We all feel like we could have a little something better here or something better there, but we all out here moving. We striving to be better. And that's yeah. it, man. That's yeah. it. Do a sit up and then start your day. Well, listen to this. Uh, today, just since I mentioned prize picks, and then we'll get into the specifics of this Padres trade. Darts. Uh, no darts. Uh, oh, well, okay. actually, yes, darts. Listen, Browner, listen right. to this. So listen, oh. you're going to love this. I have James Harden tonight, the Clippers against your Bulls, okay, on Pi Day. I've got mm -hmm. James Harden to score more than 3.14 points. Do you suppose he's going to do that? I would hope. Okay. I put him together with De'Aaron Fox and Alex Ovechkin. I needed these guys to have five and a half either three-pointers made or shots on goal. Do you know that De'Aaron Fox last night made one three-point shot and the Kings beat up on the Lakers? But Darren Fox had one three-point basket made. Alex Ovechkin carried the day. He had seven shots on goal. So I've got a win Ooh. on De'Aaron Fox and Alex Ovechkin. Now all I need is Harden to score more than 3.14 points on Pi Day on, on Price Picks. Now, you mentioned darts. And a, a big shout-out to my champ out there, Paul Vaden, who, who texted me the other day and said, Alex and Browner were right. We're in the middle of a serious NFL free agency conversation, and you did not say full stop. You went right into dart thrower, and that was unacceptable. So I had Jalen Brunson and Connor Bedard, basketball football, uh, basketball hockey guys, to have three point shots and shots on goal. They needed five and a half. They got nine. Today, mm -hmm. I need Luke Littler, the 17 year old dart throwing phenom. 
I need them to have more than three and a half 180s. Browner, I could have a day where I've turned $40 into $120, three Ooh. times my money. But I need Littler to come through because James Harden is an automatic. So that's a good day, sir. Could be a good day. Prize picks. Download the prize picks app and use our code great friends, and they will match your first deposit 100% up to $100. But you got to download the app and you got to use our code. And then you're going to have a hundred bucks in and they're going to put a hundred bucks in and you're going to have 200 bucks. And then you're going to play Luke Littler. Okay. Let's do it. Prize picks. All right. Back to the Padres. So Alex, why don't you uh, introduce all of us to the new Padres? Sh should I say guys, the new Padres number one, is he the number one starter? Yeah, I mean, if you look around yes. and you look at the, if you just go on Twitter X and and search Padres rotation, all these baseball blogs websites have Dylan C says the number one starter in the uh, Padres rotation. So, isn't that crazy that you just traded two weeks before the season? You've traded for your number one starter, and by the way, you've upgraded your pitching staff so much because you got a number one. You didn't say, "Hey, we're getting a number five. Hey, we're filling in. We're getting a four. You theoretically made your pitching staff so much better because you got a number one. Mm -hmm. In theory. In theory. And, he and pitches what, like twenty twenty three, and you got a guy that you're no one's going to like to watch. So, all right. Well, then why don't you tell us and show us kind of the, the history and the numbers and why this deal on paper looks yeah. really good right now? Go ahead. 28-year-old right-hand pitcher, Dylan Cease, 123 games started in his career, 43-35 record, 3-8-3 ERA. Just real quick, how old did you say he is? 28. 28, okay. Last year, 33 games started, 7-9 record, 4-5-8 ERA. The White Sox, one of the worst teams in baseball. Also, defensively, I think the worst team in baseball, so no help behind him. Mm -hmm. Here's no. his uh, little resume. In 2022, he was second in Cy Young voting behind Justin Verlander in each of the last three seasons. He has started at least 32 games last year, started 33. And here's what's exciting about him in the past three seasons. He's been at least top eight in all of major league baseball in strikeouts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dude has stuff. Well, and more That's than that, word. more than that. I mean, the guy plays, the guy pitches, the guy is healthy. I mean, I don't want to jinx that, but, but you know, he's healthy. Yeah. You know, to be yeah. to be 28 years old and to look at um, his resume that you just showed us, I have to do more research. I'd like, you know, you know me, I like to know where he's from. I like to know where he was drafted. Did he play college ball? Did he come mm -hmm. right out of high school? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like to learn a little bit more about the guy. Mm -hmm. But when you when you put up that resume and you tell me that in the last, I think, three plus years, he's pitched 32 games per year, started 32 games per year. That's Blake Snell. Like Blake Snell very rarely was hurt. I mean, mm -hmm. he was, he was reliable that he'd come out and make a start. You knew right. you could mm -hmm. only really get about five innings out of the guy, but, but listen, the, here's the question you would ask yourself. Would you, if Blake Snell was your number one starter on the Padres right now, and he were making $30 million a year, would you rather mm -hmm. have Blake Snell at 30 million a year, or would you have the, rather have Dylan cease with his resume at $8 million a year? And right. by the way, control him this year and apparently next year as well. Right. Hmm. So he's he's a third of the cost, and and uh, super reliable. Yeah, I didn't. There's, <laughs> there's a pattern here in in with the San Diego Padres, and that's acquire talent that is controllable and cheap, and that's what AJ Preller has done. Right, he's and I saw, I, I saw last night. I was watching local news. Um, Browner, you know, I you you're, aren't you friends with that guy Brandon Stone from KUSI, the sports guy, sports anchor there. Yeah, friend. I would use friend loosely, but yes, acquaintances, whatever. Yeah, um, I was go. I was watching. Uh, I for some reason last night was watching some local news at like ten o'clock, and the sports moment came on during the local news, and he said the rock star GM has done it again, and I was like, rock star? Like, a, do we still call him the rock star GM? Like, his, his has have the results been good enough to continue that that ridiculous nickname? But, I'm gonna go with gunslinger from now hmm. on. He's gunslinger. a gunslinger oh, because oh, oh. because because gunslingers in football can throw you 30 touchdowns, but also throw 30 interceptions. You know what I'm saying? Like the gunslinger mentality that AJ Preller has, a lot of people like it because it's splashy. A lot of times they might miss because that's what gunslingers do. They miss. 
So I'm going to, from now on, I have retired Rockstar GM many moons ago. And now I will just go the gunslinger. That okay, is AJ Preller. The gunslinger. All right. Hey, um, if you put the slide back up on the screen so everybody can see this, we, we heard about Cease's resume. But what did the Padres have to give up to get a pitcher of this magnitude? Somebody who was a uh, you know the runner-up in the Cy Young in 2022, and it's I'm glad yeah. you mentioned that he finished behind Justin Verlander because when people hear that they go, "Wow!" I mean, yeah. think about think about who he he lost out to, uh, Verlander. But here's what the the White Sox got from the Padres. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, you'll know this name, Stephen Wilson. He's been a reliever here for two years, 102 game appearances, 106 innings pitch, 348 ERA, all with the San Diego Padres. They gave up Drew Thorpe, who was one of the pieces they got back in the Juan Soto trade, who was currently listed as the Padres number five prospect, Drew Thorpe, who some people say his changeup is the best in baseball, but he doesn't have a major league baseball fastball. So, all right. They gave up okay. the number seven Padres prospect, Samuel Zavala, who's an outfielder. And they gave up the number eight prospect, Jairo Iriarte, who's a right-hand pitcher, who you've all, well, maybe not you two, who if you watched the Padres this spring, you saw all three of those dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we're not, I'm yeah. not sitting around watching Padres spring yeah. training baseball, but I will say this, yeah. you know, some people might look at the trade and go, hey, look, you know, that's a lot to give up. You're giving up your number five, your number seven, and your number eight prospect. That's a mm -hmm. lot to give up. Uh, mm -hmm. On the other hand, you might look at it like this. Hey, listen, they got 35 million into Manny Machado a year. They got 30 million into Xander Bogarts a year. They got a crap ton of money into Fernando Tatis out in right field. They're, they're bringing up one of their young studs in Jackson Merrill. Um, listen, this is a team that while there isn't the excitement around it that there was a year ago, and the reason a year ago there was all this excitement is because they beaten the Dodgers in the postseason. They mm -hmm. made it to the National League Championship Series, and they added Xander Bogarts. And they mm -hmm. were getting Tatis back. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so there, there was a year ago, there was a crap ton of excitement. This year, spring training, not really. Because no. most people look at the Dodgers and they go, well, look what they added. They added two monster arms and they added Otani. So everybody mm -hmm. just assumes that the Dodgers are going to smoke everybody anyway. But what the Padres have done here is under the radar. It's not a $35 million a year deal. It's not a mega hundred plus million dollar contract. What they've done is they've just gotten themselves significantly better. In the pitch, this is a this is a move that a team that smart has, baseball. This is a this is a move that a playoff team does. This is a team that on paper, listen, the Padres on paper are a playoff team. On paper, yes. Before the, the this, by the way, the before this, between, they were too. Their only problem is is that the the guys who won the National League last year are in their division, the Arizona Diamondbacks, and the guys mm -hmm. who are the best team and who have been the best team in their division for the last yeah. ten plus years are, are the Dodgers, and they got hey. a lot better. So shout out to expanded wild card, baby. Like ain't no one, no one here, and no one's gonna tell you that the Padres are gonna go out and win the division. I don't think anybody here has those aspirations. The difference between last year is last year during Fan Fest, you had the four guys on the stage saying, "Who do y'all want to play in the World Series? It don't matter. We're gonna win." As this year, back to reality, <laughs> back to lowering expectations to where they probably should have been last year, and it's like, "Hey, we're a playoff team. Let's go play like a playoff team, and then when we get there, we'll figure it out." But if you okay, you're correct. I don't think they will be saying that in any pl public forum. Nice to hear on occasion, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. With Especially the microphone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but, so, because again, everybody's got one. This team offensively isn't that much different than last year. You just took out Soto. That's a lot to if take out, though. Is it, though? As we sat and complained. You look at the as numbers we last year. Yeah. As we sat and complained about him after watching him bat every day. Right, but but but, but look, but at they the, didn't replace him. Right, you, so at like, the end of the day, you didn't replace. Right, him. how many home runs did, did <laughs> Soto hit last year? Whatever it was, let's just say the number was twenty five. Did they did they mm -hmm. replace those twenty five home runs? Is Jackson Merrill going to hit twenty five home runs for them? What if Jackson Merrill hits twenty home runs? That's great. Then they did. You still didn't replace him. Well, no, no, but at least they've come close with a guy who's a young kid, yeah. and they don't have to pay him compared to what they would have had. I, to I just Soto. think that this the, the the everyday guys this roster is not that much far far off than it was last year. So will guys That's come like saying, through? Is it's like the saying the Lake. It's like saying the Lakers got rid of AD. And yeah, there's issues with AD every single day when you watch them every day. But if you don't replace AD, are you better? No, you still got to replace AD. That's all. That's kind of my point. Like when Jackson when the Merrill, season... Jackson Merrill has a very low bar for me. Be better than Trent Grisham. 
Because that's where no, he's no, play. no, no, no. So what do you? No, not for me. That, that's not how I'm. That's not how I'm seeing him. No way. Absolutely not. If he seeing? is, if he's slightly better than Trent Grisham, then this is a failure. Move on. That that would be insane to me. If he's just a little bit better. No, your floor is too low, sir. Yeah, he's he's a rookie. You, you know. All right. Let me, let's do. Let's do this. Let's 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 say this. We have a lot more on this this bone, okay, to chew on, okay? The, the, what what the Padres did yesterday, Alex, you said it's what a playoff team does? Yeah, usually at the trade deadline. So we have a lot more on this story. We'll get there. Everybody stay right where you are. This is Kaplan and crew. Hang out with us. Hey, great friends. What's going on? It is Thursday. It's Kaplan and crew got grande and the Brown man. And yes, we are in the seven mile casino studios, seven mile casino.com. If you're just getting with us, San Diego state is playing UNLV in the Mount West conference basketball tournament earlier today in Vegas. It's ongoing right now. So if you're home and you're watching on TV, great. Put your TV on the game, put us on YouTube, uh, put us on audio podcast, Turn on your radio if you still have a radio inside your house uh, and spend time with us, multitask with them, and uh, get involved in our live YouTube chat. By the way, a quick side note as we get back to the Padres and the move that they made yesterday. Um, thank you to everybody who sent us emails about the boat trip on March 30th. It is a Saturday afternoon. It's 4 o'clock. It's the Yacht America. It's Captain Troy, Captain Fathom, and it's our holiday cruise that we didn't get to do during the holidays because the Yacht America was decommissioned and being repainted and, and put all back together. I will just say this. As you can imagine, there is a finite amount of space on the boat. We can only take 74 people in total, some of whom are partners of the show that make it all happen. And we wanted to make it as invitation friendly and as uh, family friendly as possible. Meaning, you know, we know who you guys are on YouTube every day. We know who you guys are who communicate with us on social media. So, you know, hopefully... We get to our closest of close great friends, but I'm, that circle is much bigger than 74 people. If you told me 7,400 people, I got to go get, I don't know, some cruise line, but I don't have some cruise line. I got the Yacht America, all right? So hopefully you make it in. And if you don't make it in, let me just tell you one thing. It's not personal, of course, please understand that. But you know what you should do? You should come to the tailgate party beforehand because guys, as you both know, the tailgate party is a lot of fun. I mean, we get down there. If the Yacht America is going to take off at four, we'll be there by two. Don and Lori Benson will have, you know, cheese and crackers and veggies and wine. And last year, Joe Rigby brought out a barbecue and he was doing burgers and dogs. And Alex, I, because I, Joe Rigby, this guy is such an angel of a guy. You know what he said to us the other day by email? He said, will you guys, rather than me barbecuing this year, will you let me pay for a taco man? And I said, absolutely, 100%, no chance on planet Earth are we going to allow you to pay for a taco, man. And we also don't want you to go to Costco and spend a you know, couple hundred dollars on burgers and dogs. I'll pay for the taco, man. So I don't know if anybody's got a taco, man, but I'm happy to pay for the taco. Man. I'm sure He's Fat Tony's got a taco, man. You know, you're right. Come on now. You're right. You got Victor out there and start rotisserieing some chickens. You know, that's a great call. Victor got the best chicken in town. Is that a word? Rotisserie? Yeah, rotisserie. Rotisserieing some chickens out yeah. there. Yeah. Come on, Victor, get out there and rotisserie yeah. some chickens. So mm -hmm. we'll figure, don't worry. Uh, my point is, is this if you're not getting on the boat, no big deal. Maybe you can't make mm, it. You got a doorman for the boat. What do you mean? You know, you're inviting whoever to come to the tailgate, but then yeah, you but, got a doorman to make sure, validate that they have a ticket for the boat. You got well, a doorman? We, we have a guest list. Right, we but have, is, have, but do you have someone validating that guest list? Uh, no, but maybe Fat Tony has that in his bag too. Maybe he's got yeah. a doorman. He got a, he got a thinking out. I'm just thinking of all possible. Listen, I I believe no no great friend would try and pull a fast one on us, but I believe any person that has a couple libations in them would accidentally be like, oh yeah, I wasn't even supposed to be on this boat. Mm. Yeah, that Listen, could happen. We get we have some stowaways. This group, this group, there's bound to be one. Mm -hmm. there's bound to be one <laughs> and because you know why i say this too because last year the same guy joe rigby who graciously barbecued for everybody didn't get on the boat because supposedly because there wasn't room for him there were so too many like, people yeah oh no he's getting on the boat this year if i have to headlock joe rigby and bonnie and pull them onto the boat they're getting onto the boat mm -hmm. anyway you know so 
Hey, we've had a couple of great friends that have already told me, hey, I can't make it. So, you know, give my spot up. Yeah, I got another one too. JD can't make it. Oh, JD Dio Campbell. You see, now these are some of the closest of great friends. Yeah, I need I need to start deleting these he folks, just, man. He just DM'd me. So there he you go. did? Really? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, wow. I'm telling you right now, I got I got a list of guys that's like a couple of guys have told me, hey man, I can't make it. You know, uh I need I'll that give you list, the list. Yeah. Like Louis Escobedo, mm -hmm. for example. Louis told me it's his son's birthday and he can't make it. He's really sorry about that. And we're like, no, bro. You know, it's just, we already it's just... we already took him out though. Well, I yeah. need the, the new yeah. people who you who can't make it. Yeah, I don't know, man. I got I got um, like a handwritten list here. All right, Scott. Um, yeah. Before we waste more people's time, um, yep. you're gonna love Dylan Cease so okay. much. Okay. Because you like to hear stories. Yep, I do. Let me tell you about his story. Okay. Should I start off with the with like I'll just I'll just throw you like the entree first instead of setting you up oh. with an appetizer mm -hmm. he's a hebrew brother dylan cease is a hebrew brother yes sir oh hell no nah. oh where's hell he yeah from? where's he from he's from milton georgia okay i didn't know we but had any hebrew brothers in milton georgia he is uh, that's the first thing that pops up on wikipedia what's it say born in milton georgia mother and cease father jeff cease played high school football oh. his father's side of his family is jewish his paternal grandmother betty cease Played professional baseball. Her oh. husband, Harold Cease, her and her husband, uh, Harold Cease, are buried in Lakeside Memorial Park, a Jewish cemetery in Doral, Florida. Uh, Doral, probably. Okay, That's how sure. It's probably pronounced. Uh, what's the name of the of the cemetery? Uh, they, Lakeside you, Memorial Park. You know what? Um, my father is probably watching right now. Mm -hmm. I think my father's mother and father are in the same place. There you go. His grandparents are, are buried there. Okay. Maybe maybe today. Maybe Browner. Oh, oh, oh. Clickety-clack. Oh, Brown. See that right there? See that? Me and Dylan Cease. Me and Dylan Cease, dog. I'm going to have to show up at the club, Padres Clubhouse and go, yo, I'm going to have to give him one of these dog tags here. One of these bring them home now dog tags. You feel me? Fam, if you if you show up anywhere near Dylan Cease, pulling out your chains, fam, they're going to have to escort you out. Why? Unless you're giving him a chain, you giving him one. You gonna have no. one made for him? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy one. Who, who, where's Scott gonna show up where Dylan sees that man? They, they, Scott ain't gonna apply for no credentials. Either. No, I'm not. First gonna, never gonna first happen. First maybe he comes. Hey, maybe he comes to my synagogue. Let's let's be very clear. This man got a badge. He can go. He can go behind some places that he's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, if mm -hmm. he can go in the police tape, he can get in the Padres locker room and holler at Dylan sees. Yeah, he know true. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I just don't like going to the clubhouses. I don't like going to the locker rooms. Done with that crap. You ain't asking times. questions. You delivering to your brother. So okay, keep telling us more of the story, Alex. Dylan, Dylan Cease, uh, a very good high school baseball player, uh, committed to Vanderbilt University. But oh. prior to his senior season, uh, MLB.com had him uh, listed as a potential first round pick. Uh, but in his senior season in March of 2014, uh, tore his UCL. So oh, had wow. Tommy oh. John. Oh wow! So he dropped. He actually entered the draft anyways and dropped to the sixth round. Was drafted by the Cubs in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, the Cubs knew what he got, knew what they got. So they actually gave him a ton of money comparatively to where he got. He signed like a 1.5 million dollar signing bonus, even though he mm -hmm. was picked in the sixth round. Uh, pitched for the Cubs up until about 2017. Not up until, but until 2017, where he was traded to the White Sox in a trade where the White Sox got Jose Quintana. Worked his way up. And uh, yeah, been since made his debut in 2020, and has been Dylan Cease ever since. Wow, that's impressive. So 10 years ago in high school, gets hurt, um, still goes into the draft. Could have said, "Hey, screw it, I'll just go to Vanderbilt." I mean, I assume. Mm -hmm. um, decides to go into the draft, makes some money, gets rehabbed, and uh, gets traded from one side of Chicago to the other side of Chicago, and now he finds himself in San Diego. Hey, good for him. Good yep, for Dylan. He, uh, actually, made his debut in 2019. Okay. And average 10 strikeouts per nine innings as a rookie. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah. Impressive. Dude's got stuff, man. Dude's got Let's stuff. Go. Hey, go. when he gets when he gets into town, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Dylan Cease, my brother. I may show up with one of these dog chains, one of these dog tags that say bring mm -hmm. them home now. Okay, which I know a lot of us are all wearing. Um, but I'll also bring you some blenders. And you're gonna be like, What's up with these? And I'm gonna be like, dude, this is a local company in San Diego that um they have the best sunglasses mm -hmm. they got they they're polarized they're fashionable they're priced right and you can save 20 percent when you use our code kaplan 
So if you go to blenders on social media, 15%, you go to their website, 15%, you buy your blenders through us, you get 20%. I want to keep on pumping this up for this reason, because when you get on that boat on March 30th, I'm hoping that you're doing two things for us. One, rocking some Kaplan and crew gear that you get on kaplanandcrew.com and two, rocking some blenders. Okay. Mm. That would be super cool if you guys were rocking some blenders. And if you're going to buy some blenders, don't buy one pair, buy two, three, four pairs. So you got different colors, different styles. Um, and, and, you know, four pairs of blenders is what it's going to cost you to go to the mall and buy one pair of Ray-Bans. All right. So use our promo code Kaplan and save 20%. Shout All right. Back blenders. to Dylan Cease. Yeah. Back to Dylan Cease. Yeah. So uh, everybody was kind of questioning the timing of the trade because it was so close to the Padres taking off to Korea. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> here's what's crazy about it. You're Steven Wilson. You've been a Padre. You know you're going to be on the team because you're, you've are you been one of their best relievers the past two seasons. Just middle reliever guy. Uh, you're sitting there with your significant other waiting to board this bus and your phone starts ringing. Oh, yeah. That's what happened to Stephen Wilson yesterday. This is according to Kevin A.C., the Union Tribune. The Padres and their significant others were waiting for the team bus at the, outside the picnic tables at the Padres facility. When the news broke, Wilson, a bullpen mainstay the last two seasons, was seated with his girlfriend at a table across from uh, Michael King, Joe Musgrove, when he noticed something on his phone. Wilson real quick, smiled. real quick, the, the way that was written, because we're, we're yeah. looking at it on the screen. With his girlfriend at a table across from King, Joe Musgrove, and others when he appeared to notice something on his phone. It, it is almost as if he's calling Joe Musgrove King Joe Musgrove. <laughs> oh, it's because I took the clip. So he already, know, you know, journalism, I know, man. I know. I know. Yeah. I mean, just the way that paragraph read, it was yeah. as if he was calling Joe Musgrove King, King. Joe Musgrove. All right, put it yeah. back up on the screen. Let's read the rest of it. Yeah. So Wilson uh, smiled, stood up. He took a phone call around the corner as the volume of the chatter dropped. Wilson pulled his car to the side of the complex and began to move his belongings out of the clubhouse and into his trunk. Jackson Merrill stood up to hug Wilson on one on one trip. Trevor Hoffman in jeans and flip flops for the coming flight. Bear hugged him on another. King and catcher Kyle Higashioka got in their got in their goodbyes. Wilson was red eyed by the time he extended a handshake to reporter still on site. Jackson Merrill stood up to hug Wilson on one trip. What does that mean? I don't understand the sentence, but whatever, whatever. Yeah, you always got to like criticize AC somehow, right? I just because I because his writing style sucks. But that's okay. That's neither here nor there. Um, look, it, it, that is a very interesting story. And it's a good well, it's thing he was crazy. there. Good thing he was there to tell it. You know, I mean, yeah. forget about style. But um, yeah, that's crazy, dude. Like that's where crazy. everybody's getting ready to go. And I wonder if he's on one hand, he's going like, hey, this is great. We don't have to go to Korea. Like, I don't want to mm -hmm. fly all the way around the world to go play a couple of baseball games mm -hmm. and have to fly back. I mean, but on the other hand, it's like, wait a second, where do we go from here? And now yeah, you go to, to camp, you go to, you go from, you go from, I'm about to go to South Korea to let me go get my car, unload my locker, drive from Peoria to Camelback to the White Sox complex, and now do spring training for another two weeks when you thought you were done with spring training. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing, too, is remember the Padres started a week early. So Steve Wilson gets to live in Peoria for a long time. And people were wondering, well, did Dylan Cease make the flight? Does he just stick around in Peoria and work out with the dudes that didn't make the team? Like, well, what does... Dylan Cease do. And Dylan Cease did not flight. make the flight. He did not make the team flight. But Dylan Cease, according to USA Today, Bob Nightingale, will be flying to Korea today to meet with the team. Because, I mean, they're there for a week. Yeah. And they need right. to get him going. They need and, to get him to start working with Ruben Yebla ASAP. So. And aren't they aren't they playing while they're there? There's two games against the Dodgers that count mm -hmm. in the standings. But I know that they're playing like a total of four games. So are they there playing like two exhibitions with the Dodgers and two real games? Or are they playing like other like Korean type stuff? Do you know anything about that? I did. I know that they're playing two games when they come back from Korea that don't count. Mm -hmm. I don't. I didn't. I didn't know they were playing two games over. There. I I only heard this last night. I, I didn't know it either. Um, it was part of the Dylan Cease report that I heard last night. So now here's the interesting question: Did the Padres just get their new starting like ace? Because I saw a lot of um, reports last night that listed now the Padres starting pitching staff. And it's not like they went, okay, you Darvish, Joe Musgrove, Dylan Cease, Michael King. They didn't do that. They went right for Dylan Cease is your number one. Now, granted, they've already you know projected that 
you Darvish will start game one and, and Joe Musgrove will start game two. They're not going to change that. I mean, I wouldn't think, but I mean, is, is Dylan cease now as many people have published? Is, is he the number one? Well, here is the, the stats of the big three. This is also from the UT. Thanks. I didn't have to do this. Um, this is the stats of the big three since 2021. This is not just last year. This is 2021, 2022, and 2023. Dylan Cease has started more games than you, Darvish, and Joe Musgrove. He's pitched more innings than you, Darvish, and Joe Musgrove. He has a 3.54 ERA. You, Darvish, has a 3.87. Joe Musgrove has a 3.07. Strikeouts through nine innings. Dylan Cease, much better. 11.4 average strikeouts per nine innings. And all the other extra analytical stuff that I left in there for, for you two nerds. Well, one of the one of the numbers there, yeah, take a take a look at this. Dylan Cease has started 97 games, and he's got the most starts, number one in all of baseball. Mm -hmm. From 21, 22, and 23, he has started the most games of any pitcher in all of baseball. I would never have known that, right. but I'm looking at the chart right now. 97 games started, and I looked at the number one. I'm like, what is that? And then I looked up statistics and major league baseball rank for the Padres top three starters. So he's got, so Darvish has started the 25th most games over the last three years. And mm -hmm. Musgrove has started 40, which obviously we know last year, you know, he missed a whole bunch of starts because of, mm -hmm. um, because of his, uh, his injuries in spring training. So, you know, when you look at Darvish and Musgrove, they've both pitched, you know, 400 in Musgrove's case, 460 innings and Darvish is almost 500. But in the case of cease, he's pitched much more, uh, 526 innings and just all the numbers. He's got a better ERA um, other than Musgrove has a, a better ERA than both of them, but he's also pitched fewer games. If, um, you're questioning, if you're questioning who's the number one, who would you rather have than cease right now? Well, you, I'm not questioning it. I just didn't know because the numbers tell us the story. And mm -hmm. I'm questioning it because all three of them had a down 2023. That's why I'm questioning it. Like, how can you confidently say my number one? After the season he had last year, well, you stuff. also said that, that he's number one with 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 a bad team. I mean, they were the worst team or one of the worst teams in baseball. They were pretty last bad year. last year. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, so can we give but him a little bit of a break? He's number one to me because now he's on that bad team defense. in twenty twenty two. Yeah, but you he's doing he's doing good him. on a bad team. The defense has always been solid here. You put this defense behind him, and again, like I always say, I want a guy with stuff. Give me a guy with stuff. The guys of the guys that they have as starters, he got the most stuff. So to me, if you all three of them had bad bad years last year, give me the guy with the stuff. The give thing me about this is like the thing about this, and here's the reality: it, the conversation doesn't matter about who your number one is until the playoffs come around. Then you can have that conversation because it doesn't matter. Like if Dylan Cease is available to pitch 33 times, he's going to pitch 33 times. So. It doesn't matter. You can line up your rotation on Thursday. You already know it's probably it might be Dylan Cease now on Thursday against the Giants. But does it really matter if it's Thursday or Friday or Saturday? No. That's all. Like, so I, I we can get into that conversation about who's the best. But I don't think you can answer that after all three of them had a down twenty twenty three. I don't know who the best is for twenty twenty four because confidently I can't tell you what either of them, what any of them are going to be in twenty twenty four. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But they're what healthy. I am curious, what I am curious than about last is, year. They're healthy. Listen, what, what makes this trade so brilliant, though, ultimately, is that you have a young guy who has pitched more innings than anybody else, who has more strikeouts than anybody else on your staff, who's making like $8 million a year. I mean, that's the thing is Musgrove's $20 million a year. Darvish is like $22 million a year. This guy's an $8 million a year guy for the next two years. I'm telling y'all. Dylan Cease is the best pitcher. Just like I told y'all, Blake Snell was the best pitcher. And y'all kept talking about Joe Musgrove. And I told y'all Blake Snell was the best pitcher on this staff then. And I'm telling y'all right now, Dylan Cease is the best pitcher on this staff because he got the stuff. But you were wrong when we were having that conversation in 2022. How? Joe Musgrove, Joe Musgrove was the best pitcher in 2022 for the Padres. Blake Snell was the best pitcher in 2023 for the Padres. So over a two-year period, who was the best pitcher? Blake Snell. What, mean? what you mean? What it means? Stop trying to see. You're trying to see, dress the question and, up and move parts around. The answer is nah, Blake Snell. You, you, right. you just want credit for for hey, I told you Snell. Now I'm telling oh, you Cease. I want you, you guys Thank to know you. 
Okay. Real simple. You got it. You Real got simple. It. Real hey, simple. listen. Let me let me ask you guys Real a quick simple. question before we uh before we move on. This guy. This guy. Oh, you don't like to give you credit, Brown. Like I know, credit. man. I know. It's all right, y'all. I know. And you like I to know. take your own credit. You know? I know. I gave him I, credit I, yesterday. Know. I put you the know. clip up. To Browner's credit, Jackson Merrill earned his spot on the job. I literally gave him credit yesterday. He just right. wants credit for something that's just not true. In 2022, Listen, you, Joe Musgrove was you, the best pitcher on the Padres. You, that is a fact. Like Jackson Merrill. <laughs> That's all people really need to know going <laughs> forward. You don't hey, like them. Here's what, here's what people need to know going forward. I, and it's a question. How did you guys like the Mushroom Life coffee, the Life Brew? Did you guys like it yesterday? Did you not like it? Would you go back to it? Would, oh, I would, liked it better than that transition again. I was I'm trying. I was trying, but 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 Browner <laughs> Browner is so consumed with telling us how smart he is that I'll never get spots in. So know. you know, I mean, I know. unless I push I dogs on it no, myself, no, no. You know, hey. his ego is so much more important than the Scott, spots no, in the show. No, 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 no. Full stop. No, wow, bro. Full stop. Full stop. No, Full stop. No, man. Yeah. Stop trying to blame me. Yeah, I'm blaming you for this one. I'm blaming you. Hey, so what'd you guys think? What did you think of the Mushroom Life coffee? <laughs> I thought it was great. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not even kidding. Like I, I genuinely thought it was great. Um, here's oh, what I man. here's what I did this morning with the mushroom life coffee. I made my regular cup of coffee, and then a friend of mine who he gave me this trick I would never have known. I took the mushroom life coffee. I took one scoop of it and I put it in my regular coffee because it's got this creamy kind of coconutty kind of flavor to it, sweetness to it. So I took the coconut. Uh, when I took the mushroom life coffee, I put it in my regular coffee. And I had it. So I got the caffeine from the regular coffee and sort of the focus that comes with the Mushroom Life coffee. If you've not tried this product yet, you got to try it. And you got to save with us. Go to uh, Mushroom Life's website, which is Life Brew, L-Y-F-E, lifebrew.com. And use the code K-Life, L-Y-F-E, K-Life 20. And you'll save 20%. Or you can use the, the QR code right here. Give it a shot because we all really liked it. Um, the Mushroom Life coffee from Life Brew. All right, stick around. Plenty more to get to. All right, everybody, I want to talk to you guys uh, at the quick halftime here about a couple other of our great partners here at Kaplan and Crew. Um, I will start off by saying this. Go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, and get your Kaplan and Crew merch because that boat trip is coming, and it's going to be on March 30th, and a lot of you guys are coming out for that, and I want to see you guys rocking our gear because we need brand ambassadors. We need this year when you're going to Dodger Stadium, Angel Stadium, obviously everybody's going to be going to Petco Park. I need you guys all wearing our gear so that people go, where do I get that gear? And you tell them, kaplanandcrew.com. All right. Hey, our friends at Tory Holistics and California Holistics, you know the story by now. You save 20% when you buy your cannabis products through us by using our code BETTERBUD. That's it. BETTERBUD. That's all. Super easy. Better Bud is how you save 20% on whether it's flour or vapes, or gummies, or topicals, or tinctures, or whether you're using cannabis for sleep, or pain, or uh, anxiety, or recreation, you save that 20% by using our code BETTERBUD. Okay, hey, let me um, talk to you guys really quickly. Alex, what'd you think yesterday of the young man from uh, from BetUS? Because he was really good on the air, but mm -hmm. he, he killed us yesterday. Because, uh -oh. <laughs> dude, he told us yeah. to take... Um, <laughs> Oh, he told us to take Abilene Chris. No, no, no. He told us to take Villanova over DePaul to cover 24 points. And I think Villanova, like, I think they only won by like one or two points. It took a miracle for them to win. Yeah. So he was telling us <laughs> that DePaul's a bunch of quitters and those guys played with heart yesterday. So Villanova's he bad. Yeah. Villanova's bad. Like mm -hmm. I said it yesterday, they like 17 and 14. Mm -hmm. That's not good. They're not no, very good. But but you see the thing is is that Corby was only playing the numbers he wasn't playing the mm -hmm. human heart and that's that's the deal mm -hmm. but I I'm gonna get I'm gonna keep going with the kid listen bet us right now you go to betus.com there's a 125 percent sign up bonus for your first three de deposits that's in, insane uh 10 percent gamblers insurance which nobody else really does um, they do accept cryptocurrency and there's a 200 percent crypto sign up bonus and so here's what I would just say to you that um, if you are someone who wants to play games during this season, especially during the basketball tournament, uh, March Mania. I got all this literature in the mail 
from BetUS. And so there's an opportunity to win a million dollars. Of course, you got to fill out their bracket and you got to get it all right. Um, yesterday, I got this because they have this scratch off thing. And I, I got 25 bucks yesterday from uh, BetUS. So go to BetUS.com. That's where you make your wagers during the basketball tournament. And that's that's how I got a bunch of money sitting in my account from going back to you know the Super Bowl. So BetUS.com or click on that QR code right there. Let's get back to the show. All right, great friends. Hey, what's going on? It is Thursday. It's Kaplan and crew, Grande, Brown Man in the house. And we come to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studio, sevenmilecasino.com. So we've obviously spent a lot of today talking about Dylan Cease and the Padres and this amazing move that they've made on paper. And uh, what does it mean to their pitching rotation? What will it mean to the Padres this season? Uh, it, it's been a great conversation so, so far. A lot more I want to get to today. Um, Aaron Rodgers is all over the news. My girlfriend said to me last night, she said, wait, isn't he a football player? And I go, yeah. And she goes, wait, he's not playing football anymore. He's running for vice president. I'm like, no, not exactly. Um, we'll get to the Aaron Rodgers story because I have to have a little piece of that today coming up in just a few minutes. But before I got some I need to get to, too, after that. After you do, huh? Well. You, you got something <laughs> yeah, else? You got something, yeah, you got something on your mind in, today? It's a, it's a ghost in my house. There's a ghost in your house. Hell yeah, it's a ghost in here, man. I'm convinced now. All he right. was watching golf this morning, and he just turned on the TV to watch Law and Order. Bro, I hate I'm working. Yeah, you ain't watching no golf. By the way, I, 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 I couldn't be I couldn't be less interested in the PGA Tour right now with the Players Championship happening down in Ponte Vedra, Florida. He like, is like not that I'm usually that interested in it, but honestly, even the players are like they better hurry up and do that PGA Live combo thing because we're dying out here. Yeah, because all the big stars took the big money and left to go to, like, the Saudi Arabian tour. So I couldn't be less interested right now in golf, but we'll get there coming up. Um, all right, so listen, I'm going to make a hard left turn here. So a buddy of mine contacted me a couple of weeks back, and he said, hey, I got this idea. You and I are always trying to get ourselves back into shape. This is a friend of mine who I trained with to do Ironmans and triathlons, and 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 so I've – he and I are always kind of on each other. Like we got to get ourselves back into shape. We got to start running again. We got to get fit again. And um, we just, we never seem to be able to follow through because he's busy like a maniac. I'm working three different jobs and it's just become too hard and we don't have the time to commit to it. And also we don't really have like a goal set right now. So this buddy of mine says to me, he goes, look, I found this app and we should start doing this workout on this app. It's called the 50 day challenge, right? So on day one, I watched this workout with this guy, Todd Smith, and I go, um, you know what? This is kind of good, but I can't believe how hard this is. And I, guys, I'm telling you right now, it's like a 15 minute workout. What and is it? Like, it was like 50 push ups and 50, you know, body weight squats. And then like these um, one legged squats or like side squats. And I got done and it took like 15 minutes to do. And I'm sweating like a beast. And I'm like, what the hell? How could this short workout of only 50 push-ups and 50 body weight squats and 50 lunges and and how could I have been how could I be this out of shape that this could hurt this badly? Right. Uh -huh. So I said, you know what? I gotta meet this guy, Todd Smith. I gotta meet this guy. I don't know this guy. I gotta meet this guy. Here he is. He's on the show for the first time. Todd Smith. Uh, he'll tell us all about his website and his app. Todd, good afternoon. Glad you're here, my man. I uh I, I started to take the 50 day challenge and I can tell you that I only made it through day like nine. Awesome. That's nine <laughs> days. That's awesome. You know, it's, it, it's better I, than zero, you know, Scott. I feel like I feel like a moron. I couldn't make it through 50 <laughs> days. Come on, man. <laughs> what? No, that's uh that's that's actually pretty good compared to what I would say uh, the average was. You're you're higher than the average. Yeah, but the thing is, is that what what I thought I would make it all the way through because I'm very, very cheap and I actually paid the $10 for the app, you know, <laughs> so I paid the 10 bucks and I only made it through, you know, day two of week two. Well, the good uh, thing is that you have it forever. So you can you can pick it up right right where you need to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Todd, um, so let us get a chance to meet you because I, I really want to start doing some like men's health stuff on the show. We've talked an hour of Padres. We're going to get back to sports in a little bit. And I think that um, what you do could really be very beneficial to the guys who, who listen and watch. Um, first of all, Browner, you may uh, enjoy this. Todd, are you from Chicago? I'm from Chicago. Yeah. Where, where, where are you from? Uh, I grew up in a town called Wheaton, which is like the footloose of the Chicago suburbs. And then, mm -hmm. uh, I went, I lived in, in the city for about 20 years. Really? You may have, you may have visited the, uh, the CVS that Browner worked in. I never worked in CVS, bruh. First of all, it was a Walgreens. That's one. Okay. <laughs> like how offended he was too. Like, I know. CVS, like, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. Don't, don't, don't ever come at me with that, bro. I worked at Walgreens. I worked at no CVS. Don't disrespect me like that. <laughs> okay and two i didn't work that long enough <laughs> to have anything of that nature <laughs> conspire and this walgreens no offense to my brother welcome to the show i don't think he would have came in really you don't think so huh yeah uh, it was a hood walgreens unless he, unless he was on fire or somebody yeah, lost him well no I, reason I, I for him to be in, up i there. worked in the hood for like seven years in chicago so i got where I was, which, which hood? Uh, i was i was in like 79th and racine a lot like uh okay. greater say again i said okay okay okay. yeah yeah i was i was in the hood for for a good seven years doing some real estate there so like i am very familiar with uh those neighborhoods yeah sure. you, might, you, you might know the, you might know that walgreens you know so he's doing business he's doing business there though he's doing business he's doing business all right so so todd um you got to explain though how a guy um is doing real estate you just mentioned it and yep. how you become and i don't really know what term to use as we, again this is our first time all getting a chance to meet you and get to know what you do um but i think you're gonna you're gonna help a lot of guys who are listening and watching um how did you become sort of a, a fitness coach is that i don't you tell sure. us what do you call yourself yeah yeah i would i would say a coach of some sort um i started coaching like triathlon at depaul university about 20 years ago mm -hmm. um a guy just literally like handed me over the keys. He was like, I'm going to LA next week. Do you want to take, do you want to take over as a coach? And I was like, uh, sure. I don't know anything. <laughs> um, so I, I started coaching from there and competing, uh, at the same time. So I, I, I kind of competed in endurance sports and Ironman Hawaii. And, uh, I did all a bunch of just crazy endurance stuff, but, um, that ran tandem with coaching and, um, I always felt like the call that there is, we have an issue here, and especially in this country, of misunderstanding of what healthy is and, and trying to get, understand that on a, on a different level. So I've been coaching privately now for like 15 years. And then my app just kind of launched uh, a couple years ago, or about a year ago, to kind of spread the, the word even more. But I just... I just felt called to it. I just, it's been in my blood. It's been in my family. And my, my dad was a big athlete. He rode his bike across America. My grandfather like lived till he was about 94 years old and he was drinking cranberry juice until the very day, the dead, uh, the days, you know, he, uh, he passed and he was just riding bikes. So it was just, it was just kind of in the blood, but I also just see, um, the freedom it gives me when, when we can move and I can move in my body and have body freedom it allows for other things in my life to be a lot more pleasurable and also effective. So I help people kind of, I'll help people in all types of ways. Like some people come to me after a, before a cancer surgery, we'll, we'll walk them through how to get to the surgery in the strongest way possible. And then how do we recover from that? I got a guy now who uh, was an all American volleyball player and then he became 500 pounds. And that's a ginormous gap in like mm -hmm. the, all the onion, all the things that go into that, all the emotion, all the habits, all the stuff. So it's been fascinating to work with these people one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, that's, that's what I do. I help people kind of get movement going, but also just get some really solid habits going. Cause I, what I try yeah. to do is create positive feedback loops. Yeah. Well, let me yeah. ask you. So, so the app, yeah. so, so I paid the $10 for the app. Alex may have just put up some, Alex, what did you put up on the screen? Um, Cause I want everybody to see this. So the app, I, I was surprised Todd that for 50 pushups and 50 body weight squats and like 50 lunges and, you know, just simple exercises, dude, I was dying. I was sweating. And, and listen, I, 
I, I had a career as a college football player and I did Hawaiian Ironman like you did. You mentioned I did race across America. I mean, I've been super awesome. fit in my 40s and now I'm into my 50s and I'm working harder and longer than ever before. And I'm not working out the way I once did. And I'm addicted to my Peloton. So I'm not really doing like other stuff. And I couldn't believe how hard I had to work. So first of all, tell everybody what is the name of the app and how people can download it. Uh, the name of the app is just, uh, you can go to daily50.com and that will take you to the app. So it's basically surrealcyclingapp.com that as well. It's two, two, I got two different ways that goes to the same place. Okay, the so daily50.com. The daily50.com, that's with five zero with the actual number. Okay. You you are talking about the daily 50. The daily 50 like became this worldwide weird phenomenon in the last few months where I was at home one day and my buddy texted me and he was like, hey man, I heard your voice on Instagram, but it wasn't you. And I was like, I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, what are you talking about? The daily 50 became like this thing where people started creating their own daily 50s. I had kids in India and with the cows doing the daily 50, I had professional boxers out of Ukraine doing the daily 50. I had people doing the daily 50 everywhere. It became this crazy thing. And then we turned it into a challenge and that's kind of how you and I uh, became, you know, connected. Yeah. So it's the daily 50 for 50 days. That's the challenge. The challenge now is is daily 50 for 30 days. That was okay. that was the first challenge. We have a new challenge coming up April 8th called the Daily 50 Lifestyle Challenge. That'll be 50 days with no alcohol, 50 days of of intentional breaths, meaning 50 breaths, kind of like a meditation. You're mm -hmm. going to do 50 days of journaling, which is like 50 words. And then you'll do the Daily 50 sprinkled in there for 50 days. So that'll be the next challenge that we're coming. Uh, and Scott, like you're... You, it's weird when we, we, we either use it or we lose it. So like sometimes when those moves that we haven't done in a while, you do the 50 pushups, but you're obviously were in great shape at one time. It's weird. Like we lose this, this connection and this strength. So it's, uh, it's been fascinating to watch people's results and uh, just watch them get, they can feel into their body again. It's been, it's been exciting. When, the you're reason I wanted, great. the re, the reason I wanted to bring you on Browner is be, because here's why. I wanted to challenge Browner and Grande. Well, let me take I, a I, I wanted to challenge these guys mm. to go on to the to the to the app, mm. and Do it. every day, every day, we would have to report to each other that we did the daily fifty. Because I'm telling you right now, Browner, I, this is going to sound crazy: fifty push-ups, fifty body weight squats, fifty lunges, and and the workouts change. Don't get me wrong, but each workout, it's fifty reps of the exercise. Um, thus the daily 50, which again, I didn't put together until you said it just now, Todd, but Browner, you and me and Grande should do this every day and report back to each other and see if we can actually do this. Now I'm going to tell you right now. Okay. Just to be, because I'm a straight shooter. Okay. You hear me, Todd? I'm going <laughs> to shoot you straight. I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's exactly that's <laughs> I'm glad you. I'm glad you said it because it would. If I said it, it'd be like, oh, well, of course, Grande. Of course, it's, you know, it's totally Grande fine. Drink. It's totally fine. I'm gonna do it, Todd. But I'm a drink. I ain't gonna uh, lie, Todd. Totally not fine. Me. I could take the 50 days off from drinking. No I'm not, yeah. it, it, listen, it ain't that I can't. I'm not taking the 50 yeah. days off. No, I can't. I, I can, pretty uh, much I barely drink exercise. exercise. I barely drink. Maybe, maybe that's I'm, a good challenge. I'm like drinking while I'm doing with... the push-ups. Yeah. Todd, you were gonna say maybe it's a good challenge to what? I mean, I was gonna say, maybe it's a good challenge if he could do the daily fifty, and you and you do the daily fifty. He does it with drinking, and you don't. And let's just let, we'll compare right. notes. You know, you yeah, know let's know. compare. Yeah. This, Alex, this is, a good, data. This is but, a good data sector for us. Mm -hmm. But you guys, you you'll love this, Alex. Um, in yeah. in Todd's resume, okay, of mm -hmm. all the stuff that he's done, Todd, just real quick, how you just go go through a little bit of your resume. For me, my resume is pretty simple. Iron Man um, in Hawaii. I've done a bunch of half Ironmans, and I did the race across America on a on an eight man team. You've done what kind of cool endurance stuff? Uh, I, I guided the the blind uh, world champion of triathlon. I, I was able to guide him, be his guide for a national championship, which was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I won the New York City triathlon on a bike that I, I just received in the streets of Manhattan the night before. Uh, and I, I was a one-time world record holder of the four beer, four mile, which means you chug a beer, you run a mile, and then you chug a beer. Not not the beer mile, but the four see, by see? four. Drinkers. Yeah. So, Alex, mm -hmm. this is right up your yeah, alley. So, see, so you sign me up for that. 
Let's do it. I think I think we should do it together. I think that that would be a great a great uh, promo. Okay, so let me get this straight. You drink a beer, you run a mile. You drink a beer, you run a mile. You drink a beer, uh, you do it four times. That's right. Four miles, four beers. What are the rules for uh, vomiting? vomiting? (laughs) Uh, You you vomit. You got to run another mile. Oh, okay. So these are going to be four slow miles. Yeah, and the beer's got to yeah. be five percent or more. So that's the only real rule. Oh, that's no problem. Like, that's no problem. Yeah. As long as you don't okay. have to catch. Yeah. Hey, so let me ask you a question because we live in a very. Uh, Hold on, real uh, quick. What was your time? Sorry, uh, you said you tw- set you set the world record. The world record at the time was twenty three minutes and forty three seconds or something like that. Jesus. So for four miles. miles. For four for miles. Four so miles and four beers. So that's that's right. a five six minute mile. It's, it's under, a, it was like a 540 mile. mile, maybe with like eight, eight to 10 second beers. Do you have to stop and drink the beer or can you drink the beer while you're you, you know, there's like a holding pattern. You got to like, there's like a little pen. You got to drink the beer in the mm-hmm. pen. And then when you're done, you got to pour it on your head to prove that you're actually done. Um, so there is, le- <laughs> there's legitimate rules <laughs> to this thing, but that's, yeah. that's kind of how it works. So all over the internet, social media, there are a lot of people working out there. People working out in gyms, doing their own little channels and things of that nature. Sure. What's the what's the most useless workout you see that you would tell people to stop doing? That's a great question. The most God, he always asks great questions. It's pain in the ass. That's such a great question. question. You're so good at bad at like tough questions. Mm -hmm. Pain in the ass. I I would I would say people go too hard. Like really, I I I I think we're in this this environment of like it's got to be hard, high intensity all the time. And the body just doesn't react. It just, it can't adapt like that. So most of what we're doing, I would say the most useless workout is people who go too hard too often. Uh, and that, and then that creates a whole bunch of other dynamics with us is like burnout and then adrenal fatigue. And then that turns into a whole bunch of stuff. So we're so like, I always say walking is, is a superpower. Like walking is like the, probably one of the best workouts there there is. It's achievable. It's digestible. It's simple. Um, but we're not, we, you can't sell walking. So yeah. like, there's no, there's no, there's no like selling of this beautiful thing called walking. So I thought I you were going to say bench. Most... Go ahead. <laughs> I thought you were going to say bench. <laughs> <laughs> no, bench it's always bad. like, it's always like people like, like my size benching. Like you're like, does this even work? Like the fit people are never <laughs> benching, benching, you know, like the fit people, the fit people are over at the dumbbell bar doing like deadlifts with some bar, you know, like, like. there is some truth to that but i would say it's not useless the most useless workout i'd say is high intensity when we go too high too hard it's it's just it's not good there's a lot of gyms there's a lot of gyms that promote that now like the the idea of like i've never been a fan of crossfit because i played sports pretty much all my childhood and and almost a little bit of my adult life professionally i've never had to just get the weight over my head or get the weight off the ground like there's no technique behind that like how does that like how does that help so i've, I've always saw crossfit it's like oh, what are you what are you doing there and, and to hear you say that people are working out too hard that makes a lot of sense well you i mean crossfit's a beautiful example of uh reebok it's just it's a great workout but when you do it too often there's so many injuries that come out of crossfit i'll probably get railed for this but it's just it's a lot of injury prone that come out of that that gym and that that experience because if you go too hard three four times five times a week like your body can't handle it it can't absorb it so we're talking to todd smith today todd i want to make sure um that people because i think we're going to have you back I, i i really feel like me and alex and browner should all take the 50 day challenge. And here's the thing. Um, I downloaded the app. Okay. Now you've said to us that the daily 50.com, the daily 50.com, but I downloaded the app and we got to get it all in the same like name. The app that I downloaded was called the playbook. So that's, that's where it's hosted. That's where all creators like me are hosted. So playbook hosts all of us, but to okay. get there, you, there's different ways to get there. So okay. let's just go the daily 50.com or the surreal cycling app.com. Either uh, one is great. Yeah. Let, let's do the daily 50.com. It'd just yeah. be easier for everybody. Listen, the daily 50 challenge is this Todd gives you videos. He shows you what to do. And then you tell him and you tell yourself whether or not you've completed them or not. So like, you know, the first day I remember he shows me where are, it looks to me like you're doing these workouts at like Tory Pines, 
Um, I don't know where exactly you are, but that's kind of what there are a like few here me. locally in San Diego for sure. Yeah. And so listen, he's showing you how to do push ups. He's showing you how to do like, you know, uh, side planks and planks. And I don't remember what the one is where you're laying on your ground and you're doing like hip, hip thrusts, like hip all things. Right. And I'll tell you something right now, men and women can really benefit from this. So I'm going to challenge Grande and Brown man to the daily 50. Listen, okay? I lay down and thrust all the time. Yeah, we know you got, we, we understand the triplets. We got it. You know what I mean? I'm going um, to lay in, I'm going to lay in thrust. I'm one of the best at it. Um, One, one more thing though, before you go, cause we got to hurry up. Um, Alex, can you put up on the screen for everybody Todd's Instagram so we can get all of our people following Todd. And then this way we can all start to do this. Cause I, I think this guys, we always talk about getting healthy, eating right, whatever. And, and like trying to find motivation and help. Um, Here's Todd's uh, Instagram. Is it, That's is it at Daily Todd 50. Smith? Yeah. Is it at Todd Smith? I can't see it from where I'm sitting here. Do I got to be yeah, barefoot? Todd. Yeah. You don't um, have to be barefoot, but it's Todd, okay, cool. T-O-D-D, one as of the number, Smith. So Todd, Todd one Smith. Okay. Todd, one Smith on Instagram. Todd, it's a great introduction. Thank you for coming on with us today. And, uh, and let's, let's bring you back. We'll, we'll do this, whether it is a couple times a month or once, whatever it is, we, I got to get my, I got to get it back together. Whoa, okay. Whoa, I'm, I'm like, I'm like 15 pounds away from getting it all back together. And uh, I look forward to you uh, coming on and coaching us a little bit. I appreciate it. You have a solvable problem. We can solve that. <laughs> All right. Todd, a pleasure, man. Appreciate you, buddy. See you guys. Right, hey, listen, take care. Um, hey, listen, um, I just want to give a quick shout out to my man, Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299 for Mountain Trust Realty Services. Shout out to Gary. You're thinking about selling. You're thinking about moving. Talk to Gary. He can help. 858-376-1299, just like Todd can help. And uh, and we're going to do that. All right. Let's get to the Aaron Rodgers story next. All right. Great friends. Hey, I, I got to tell you something. For those of you guys that are just joining us right now here on Kaplan and crew from the seven mile casino studios, the last uh, guest, Todd Smith, I really like that, man. I, I think that we could have fun with this. We could all together be doing the daily 50. And I don't just mean the three of us. I mean, everybody who's watching and everybody listening, uh, I think it'd be a lot of fun and we should try it. And I'll tell you something right now, you do that first workout. You're gonna be like, wait a second, 50 pushups and 50 second plank and and 50 body weight squats i'm sweating like a pig i know dude because you you just don't and dude i was sore for days i can't even believe how sore i was so mm. all right th um todd thank you buddy now i said i wanted to talk about uh aaron Rodgers, but at the commercial break you guys were like hey breaking news so alex i'll bum 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 dum, 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 dum. Do, do, do. According to Adam Schefter, the real one, at Adam Schefter, Pro Bowl defensive end, Joey Bosa. Any guesses? My guess mm. is released by the Chargers or backup guesses traded to the Niners. Oh. 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 Interesting. Whoa. Well, wrong. Mm. Pro Bowl defensive end, <laughs> Joey Bosa restructured his contract to remain with the LA Chargers. Oh, really? Bosa and Mac have agreed to restructures to stay in LA. Well, I mean, if I'm these guys, you know, I mean, if Brandon Staley's still the head coach, I'm like, uh, no, I'm not restructuring. Cut me and let me go. But with Jim Harbaugh as your head coach, you know, you believe, you believe that the Chargers as an organization are now more so than ever committed to winning. What did they, how did they say how he restructured his deal? No, we don't know either yet. But uh, I mean, the thing is that the, the Chargers are doing what I what I what I told you guys that the that the Vikings did with Kirk Cousins. You know, you're just pushing the the blow for later. Mm -hmm. You get mm -hmm. to keep these guys now, and you get to deal with the cap hit later. That's all mm -hmm. they're doing. So yeah, I think this is a this is the, but this is the difference between the Chargers of a year ago and the Chargers now under Jim Harbaugh. There's no chance in God's green earth that both these guys would restructure their contract to play with Brandon Staley. Right. Right. No chance. No. Hmm. By the way, you know, the show is always on audio, but it's always on video too. And there are some things that you do when you just forget you're on video. Like I just you do? totally scratched my nuts in front of everybody. I mean, I just, I, mm -hmm. there's no hiding it. I mean, people will you know see the... it and people will comment about it. They're like, did he just scratch his balls on the, yes, I did. 
as a matter of mm -hmm. fact. And I forgot I was on on video. Yes, I did. But here's the thing about doing such things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can just move on. I could, right. I could, but here's, right. a, but without right. the acknowledgement of it all, it's like people are watching right. and they're like, oh my God, did you just see what he leave did? It, he did that on mystery. TV. He you did that on, nah, I don't leave things to mystery. You should leave it to mystery. Yeah. I mean, hey, um, you know, since you're talking about uh, Bosa and the Chargers and, and, uh, you know, NFL free agency, um, you know, this is one of these great times of the year where you have all these conference basketball tournaments. We were talking about San Diego State versus UNLV. And uh, the Mountain West Conference, I was watching earlier today, I was watching ACC tournament action. Um, there's so much action right now. If you want to play any of this action, can I remind everybody about our friends at BetUS? By the way, the dude from BetUS, the handicapper who came on yesterday, who's the, uh, who's the analytics guy, that guy Corby, uh, mm -hmm. bro, he told us yesterday to take Villanova to cover against DePaul by 24 points. Uh, DePaul won the, or excuse me, Nova won the game by a point mm. and, and, barely. and like barely won the game barely. So, yeah. So, uh, listen, I don't, I didn't look to see if Abilene Christian and, uh, Stephen F. Austin went over 138 and a half. I could look that up for you here real quick. So he might've gone one for two for all I know, but mm -hmm. he was super confident that all the analytics told him that Villanova was going to blast DePaul and DePaul's a bunch of quitters. And they played with some heart yesterday and they lost that game by a point. So if you took Villanova to cover the 24 points, cause our boy Corby told you to not a good move, but Hey, listen, they're handicappers. This is what they do. They analyze uh, numbers and then they give you their plays. And, and, you know, he's not always going to be right. That's for sure. Can you what was uh, the over under what was uh, it? One thirty eight and a half. Uh, it was 57 to 60. So yeah, now, the score was 57 to 60, 57 to 60. Damn. All right. Even Austin won the game. Yeah, but he had a rough day. Um, Bet US. Okay, let's take Corby out of the equation here for a second. Let's just talk about Bet US. You can win a million dollars on Bet US right now. I Shout got this in the mail. Shout out to that young fella. I got this in the mail. This actually came in hard copy mail because I'm a Bet US Ooh, like member. That. That's nice. It's an, I'm, I'm actually going to use the bracket um, throughout the NCAA tournament. I'm going to I'm going to use the bracket. It's March Mayhem. It's Bet US, and I'm going to give you a couple of uh, headlines here. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Okay, that the, that's the industry's like craziest number. 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. 10% what's called gambler's insurance, which I don't know of anybody else that does that. Um, Bet US does accept cryptocurrency, and they've got a 200% crypto sign-up bonus. Ooh. Okay, everybody's been going crypto crazy here in the last couple of weeks because the Bitcoin's been out of control. And um, also, you can get a 250% casino bonus. So that's also great. So look, I know for me, I'm all loaded up in my account because I had played all the football games throughout the playoffs on BetUS, and I took the Chiefs every single week. So get started at BetUS.com, or you can call them at 1-800-MY-BETUS, 1-800-MY-BETUS to learn all about their new offers and bonuses and setting up an account betus.com betus do it y'all the game begins it's joey bosa i wonder what's up with keenan allen i wonder if he's going to restructure you got to figure he is right i mean they cut mike williams and again if you're if you're joey bosa and you're khalil mack and you're willing to restructure your deals not because you're not going to get your money you're just trying to help the organization because really the decision comes down to this do i want to stay with the chargers or do I want to leave the Chargers? Mm -hmm. And by restructuring your contract, what you're saying is, I would prefer to stay. And the right. reason you would prefer to stay is because they've gone out and gotten you not a head coach. They've gotten you the top guy available Correct. in this past year's class. Now, does Jim Harbaugh come in and do what Jim Harbaugh has done everywhere he's been? You know, when he was at USD, he was a much younger guy, and he turned all those kids from – hey, we're at this little school and we don't really play big time football. And he was like, hey, I'm a former NFL quarterback. I'm a former first round draft choice. I'm a former Michigan Wolverine. Follow my lead. And all those kids did. And then he was able to do the exact same thing when he went to Stanford. And he was still young enough. And, um, and you know, who has it better than us? That was, we learned about that in San Francisco. You know, yeah. so he had the 49ers convinced to follow his lead. And then it mm -hmm. took him a long time at Michigan. It didn't happen overnight in Michigan. I think he was there for yeah, eight 10 years. years. Yeah, 10 years. Until he finally won a national championship. So now 
as Jim Harbaugh is probably like 60 years old, does that sort of intensity, I'm doing push-ups with the team, I'm out there throwing with the team, does it work at the NFL level in today's day and age, at his age? We're going to find out, but I'll tell you right now, Joey yeah. Bosa and Khalil Mack are both putting their money on Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, and I think if the Chargers can run back the majority of the players they had last year, and the, by the majority being like the good ones, they should they should be a playoff team. I mean, that's right. just that's they have enough talent to be a playoff team. In the trenches, they need some help. Their offensive line needs some help. You know, they have no linebackers to speak of whatsoever. They lost Kenneth Murray. Eric Kendricks was like, "Oh, I'm going to the Niners. Never mind, I'm going to the Cowboys." Um, so like they don't have like those particular positions. But with Jim Harbaugh, man, and Justin Herbert, you, they should be a playoff team. Mm-hmm. You're asking if it works. The head coach will work, and he'll make the quarterback work. And as we've seen around the NFL, those are the two main fixtures that you need rolling in the right direction for everything else to fall in line. Like, look what the Chiefs have been able to do just by – now you got Chris Jones on defense. The Chargers have two guys who can pass rush, who've now restructured well, their deals. Okay. They've restructured their <laughs> deals to be there. So they're showing you that they want to be there because they see that what is happening. They see that the, the organization is finally investing in them by investing in Jim Harbaugh. And so when you start to see that, you want to be a part of that. And I mm-hmm. think that if you could get Herbert rolling as one of these top five guys, everything else falls in line. Everything else gets easier. I just got a text from my boy Sedano up in LA who sent me the Schefter tweet and it says, you know, pro bowl defensive end, Joey Bosa restructures his contract to remain with the chargers per sources. So Bosa and Mac will both restructure and both stay in LA. And Sedano likes to taunt me because he knows that I I'm the you know, number one charger hater. And he writes me, he goes tough one for you, Cappy. And I write back to him. Not at all. These fools are always hurt. I want Joey Bosa to stay with the chargers. Hey, guys, how many games did he play last year for the Chargers? If, if you look back on his bio. Top ahead, I want to say like six, but I could be very wrong. Yeah, He was hurt a lot. Yeah, I mean, if I if I look back at Joey Bosa in the last, call it, four years. After um, he just, got paid. Just to give you an, an indication of, of, you know, what you might expect for him or expect from him. I would love to know how many games has Joey Bosa played every year for, call it, the last four years. And and I want to say he was drafted in probably what year 16, 17? Yeah, last year in San Diego. Okay. So he was drafted last year in San Diego. And then I'll never forget when they put him on like Jimmy Kimmel, him and Phillip Rivers. And Phillip Rivers was so uncomfortable. He so <laughs> did not want to be there promoting the Chargers move to LA. <laughs> mm-hmm. But so you- he signed his five year contract in 2021. Mm-hmm. And in that 2021, it looked great. Mm-hmm. You know, 16 games played, 10 and a half sacks. Mm hmm. 50 tackles. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Then 2022, five games played. Mm-hmm. 2023, nine games played. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Yeah. So 2022, five games. 2023, nine games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, they should restructure him and pay him half because that's all he ever plays is half. Yep. Yeah. In fact, last year when he played, as I recall, didn't he come back late in the season and because uh, he was trying to rush back to help them out? And he came back and he like, I, was it his groin maybe last year? Man, he got all them soft yeah. tissue injuries, man. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm surprised they both did it. I really am like that. Mm-hmm. But that's the power of Harbaugh that I mean, maybe I shouldn't be surprised. Yeah. And the, the, the funny thing about it is, man, like you look at the guys they signed, you know, they got this running back from Baltimore. You know, they, they, they got a, a tight end that, that, no one really uses in, in a passing format and you're like this is the problem when you're so far over the cap you can't do anything you can't do anything splashy you can't you can't make your team better you just have to go with the guys you got so i think they they can be a playoff team because it's expanded playoffs if it didn't have that extra team like who knows so cuz the same thing with the dodgers being the king in nl west you know they're in the division with the chiefs so they're 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 in that same boat, man. You're saying the Padres are in the same division with the Dodgers as the Chargers yes. are with the Chiefs because you've got the best team in baseball essentially in Correct. your same division. Like at the end of the at the end of the day, you're going to have to beat the Chiefs to win your division. Yeah, that ain't happening. And and well, until it happens, which yeah, I don't think anybody hasn't. thinks that's going to happen, right? right. 
Who do you give a better chance to? You give the, the Padres a better chance to beat the to, to win the division or the Chargers the better chance to win the division? The Chargers by a mile. It's not even close. <laughs> I'm even close. Yeah, because the thing is, all what? it takes is all it takes is one bad tackle to Patrick yeah. Mahomes, and it's right. over. Right, and, right, yeah. right. And then they're then the draft. Right, Raiders but, knock him out. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Max Crosby does something, and all of a sudden, yeah, right. Yeah. All right, well, let me move on. Hey, here. hey, hey there. Okay. Yeah, uh, you couldn't get me to give you uh, uh, any odds of the Padres winning the division. Like, not a one. I brother. don't not see not a it one. In, I don't see it. I don't see not any a, way possible. Not a one. If this because was the, the old format, have, yeah. why play? Literally. The Dodgers didn't was... add anybody of substance last year in free agency. I guess they had Victor Martinez who had a breakout season. Jason Hayward was fine. But like their pitching rotation was in shambles. One one of their pitchers went to jail. The other one tore. Like how many Tommy Johns did they have on their rotation? And they still won over 100 games. Mm -hmm. So if Otani doesn't, if Otani hits 250 with 20 home runs, they still got other dudes that are going to come in and do something. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And yeah. listen, look, look at the Dodgers. The Dodgers are all about offense, you know, because clearly right. they, they, their defense. I mean, Gavin Lux is a mess wherever he's going to wind up playing. Mookie is having to save them by moving to short. And we'll see how that works out. You mentioned Muncie yesterday and he's older. He's a little chunkier. He's maybe not as athletic as he once was. You know, by by moving Mookie from right, you know, you're not as strong as you were out there. The the Dodgers, who've added arms, don't get me wrong, they've added big time arms. They're about offense. They're not about defense. And they're about two, pitching it, and hitting. The 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 scary thing is the scary thing is if you based it on offense, they still be favored. Like well, if, yeah. if if you're if you're saying that that they're more based on pitch, so you're saying it is based on offense. Yeah, I'm saying that they're they're going right. the Dodgers are going to are going to win games 10-7. Now, let's hope cuz this crazy it's baseball so crazy things happen. What if they don't hit? What cuz again, it's baseball is weird. Baseball mm -hmm. is weird. And this looks like one of the greatest lineups ever put on paper. What if for no reason that's explainable guys just don't hit? Or they don't hit at the same time. Like one guy gets hot and he goes cold. Another guy gets hot and he goes cold. And it just is a funky thing all year. It could happen. I don't I, think it will. I also want to say something on record. Oh, full stop. Mo full, well, it's it's Dodger related, so it's not full stop. Oh, okay. Okay. Nonstop. It, nonstop. Mookie Betts will play more games outside of shortstop than shortstop this year. That's not going to work. Not mm. full time, not full time. He'll play disagree. games at shortstop, but not full time. No I'm gonna chance. disagree. I'm gonna disagree. They got because they have shortstops. Yeah, I, everybody they have, got shortstops. They have shortstops. I think they're and gonna. When, I, I think they're gonna force it. I do. Really? Yeah, yeah I do. I do. Uh, why, then, then why not just move him back to right field? Because he was fine at second. No, no, but, but, but Xander, they, Xander Bogart's gonna be fine at second too. No, but, but where is he best? right field Bruh. okay right so, <laughs> correct so, so yeah. that's what i would do i mean I, i'd want to yeah. put him in the position where he's the best and then when you say they have short stops um you know if you if you put them out for us to to take a look at and you said okay hey look on this team here are the other guys that should be playing short on the dodgers mm -hmm. the question i would ask dave roberts is well if you have other guys that are that are good enough to play short why not take Gavin Lux, get him out of there because he's been a mess, put him at second, which is probably where he more naturally belongs. Mm -hmm. Put this guy, who's who's the next guy for the Dodgers that should be playing short. I Rojas. Don't okay. So put Rojas at short and move Mookie back to right field. Why not do that? Because obviously they think Mookie would be better at short, no? Yeah, but it's spring training. They're just tinkering. They're doing whatever they can. But I don't... Over a 162 game schedule is Mookie Betts your best option defensively at shortstop. Like is Gavin Lux that bad? Is that is Gavin Lux that good that you have to make room for him by putting Mookie Betts in shortstop? I know these guys are smart. I know they're analytically driven, and I know that like listen, they would keep winning 100 games. I could be an idiot. That's just what I think. I think yeah. it's a weird move, and I don't see him playing over 100 games there. I just don't. I this is just a guess. My guess is is that they've made a commitment to say Mookie Betts is now going to be our shortstop. Hmm. And, and if he's your everyday shortstop and he's fully healthy all year long, 
I figure he's going to play 145 games at short. I mean, that's just a guess. But I, I and, and since I say, since I'm using the word guess, I guess we'll find out. You know, I guess we're going to see what happens because I think he played. I think we we looked this up the other day. He played maybe 16 games at short. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. And and I wonder how many games he played at second last year. Probably also in the neighborhood of like 16 to 20 games at second. So that's 45 games if we're right. I mean, 35 to 40 games at short and at second. Which okay. takes him out of the outfield 120 games. Uh, last year, he played 107 games in outfield, right mm -hmm. field. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this he, he must have moved. Hold on. I'm reading this wrong. Okay. Here we go. All right. uh, he's played. He started 77 in right field, 62 at second, oh. and 12 at short. Wow, 62 at second. I didn't realize it was that many. Mm -hmm. Wow. So 62 and 12. That's 74. I mean, he's going to play 74 games this year uh, and then throw in that they've already said, you know, he's now an infielder. So, I mean, I would say more like 107 at short. Not buying yeah, this, are you? No, nah, dude. You know what it is, too? It, and it's not just Mookie, man. It's Max Muncy, too. Like, those two on that side, yo, let's learn how to bunt, man. Let's just bunt it all day over there because these dudes ain't going to get it. Yeah, you don't. You don't believe. It, you don't. Why? You don't believe that that Mookie could be a, a good shortstop. That's not what he's saying. What's he saying? I, I, well, I don't think that's what he's saying. What is he I saying? I think that he's saying he's better somewhere else, and he won't be a full time shortstop. That's that's what I think. I he's think saying. Mookie and Max Muncy is a legitimate defensive issue for the Dodgers. On liability, the liability. If, that's if, my thing. If Mookie Betts cannot play the position like a premier shortstop, they must assume. He's the best athlete on the team, and he can do it. Or they're doing what the Padres are doing. It's like, hey, we need this guy in the lineup. We have to put him somewhere, and he can do a good enough job. Like, we think Jackson Merrill can do a good enough good job enough at job. center field, yeah. and Xander Bogarts can do a good enough job at second base. It's not that we're expecting them to excel and become platinum gold glovers like Tatis was. Right. Like, I don't think we're expecting that at all. All right. Well, I hey, just think I, I just look at that left side of the infield. I'm like, hmm. All right. Hit it there. Go for it, man. All right. Here's what I'm going to say. Uh, I wanted to get to this Aaron Rodgers story. So here's what we'll do. We'll talk about this Aaron Rodgers thing in the Cox halftime exclusive. And we'll take the Cox halftime exclusive, which is normally just for TV. And we'll actually add it to today's YouTube show. Will we do it at the halftime, Alex, or will we do it after this segment? We'll just do it after the segment. Okay, so that's what we'll do. Um, everybody stick around. Radio listeners, stay right where you are. We're going to get deep into this Padres trade, what they got, what they gave up, who won, et cetera. We're going to get to the, the big story of the day. We'll get to that coming up, radio listeners. For everybody else who is a podcast viewer on the way, we'll do the Cox Halftime Exclusive. We'll put it into the YouTube show, and we'll get uncensored. Stick around, everybody. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. All right, everybody. Hey, it's time for the Cox Halftime Exclusive here on Kaplan and Crew from the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. For those of you that are with us on TV, you know, we tell you guys this all the time that, you know, this is the 10-minute the period of time where it's just us, the three of us and all of you guys watching on TV, Cox Channel 4 in San Diego, uh, Orange County, Palos Verdes, LA, and Santa Barbara. But today, we never got to this on the radio, and I really wanted to talk about it. So we'll just add this segment into the YouTube. Uh, as always, this segment is being brought to us by our friends at Prize Picks, And you can download the Prize Picks app, and Alex will put up the uh, QR code on the screen. And you can just click on that with your phone. Go to Prize Picks, download the app, use our code GREATFRIENDS, and they will match your first deposit 100% up to 100 bucks. And uh, I am expecting to have two victories today on Prize Picks because I didn't realize this. I said it on the radio. I didn't realize today was March 14th. I didn't realize that was called Pi Day, but 314 <laughs> all makes sense. And I've got James Harden um, at 3.14 points. You know, I may even play Harden again with somebody else. I mean, because they're still offering it to me. You're I mean, just trying to get away with that one, huh? Can you do that? Can you play it twice? Can it, can you do that? Yeah, I, don't I even think know. so. Okay. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. All right. Um, let me do this. We have not talked about this yet, and I want to talk about this. So Aaron Rodgers. 
Um, earlier in the week, it was this discussion. Aaron Rodgers is maybe going to team up with Robert F. Kennedy, and he's going to be the vice presidential candidate on that ticket. And of course, I hear that and I go, that's nonsense because Aaron Rodgers going back to playing football. But I really do think that you could play football and be the vice president of the United States because the vice president doesn't do jack squat anyway. So I fully expect Aaron Rodgers to go back to I mean, play. That's, that's just true, though. Like, they don't it, do anything. It is true, right? Like, I mean, like, yeah. I, I'll ask you, who's the vice president of the United States right now? Kamala Harris. Yeah. Please tell okay. me. Everybody okay. knows the answer right. to hold that on. question. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Who was the vice president for the previous administration? I hope Pence. everybody knows that one, too. Okay, Mike Pence. You said Mike Pence. Mm -hmm. Go back before Biden. that. Okay, yes, Biden was vice president. Okay, keep going deeper. Dick yeah, Cheney. Who's Dick Cheney the vice president for? George W. Bush. Okay, go mm -hmm. back before that. How about George Bush, the, the original George Bush, the dad? Who is his vice president? Mm -hmm. Now that's a good question because that was 1990. <laughs> Now, I want to say here's a, here's a here's a here's another question for you. That was yeah. a, that, that, that when, was a good question. When was the last time you saw Kamala Harris? I mean, I never see her. The other well, now let let's relax. Let's relax. She's she's out there visibly now. Now, if you'd asked this question six months ago, I'd be like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, well yeah, it's campaign, campaign season. Now. Yeah, it's right. campaign yeah. season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. watched. So hey, you you listen, should be seeing her now. Listen, listen, man, I watched Veep. I know the vice president doesn't do anything. Okay. <laughs> Julia <laughs> Louise Dreyfus perfectly told me that they do nothing. I've yeah. never seen Veep, and I, I know how critically yeah. acclaimed it was. It was they, and the only reason they stopped doing great it, show. Yeah. the only reason they stopped doing Veep mm -hmm. was because it was so outlandish. Mm -hmm. But then Trump became president, and they're like, we can't keep up. Like, right. what, pe what people thought was a comedy now is becoming like reality. So we they just stopped doing it. Mm. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. Could Aaron Rodgers play for the Jets and be vice president? My opinion, yeah, because the vice president of doesn't do anything. But, but now Aaron Rodgers, I, I'm just kind of looking through some of the stuff we had prepared for today. What is his deal? Why don't we let him speak for himself? There's a you have some some like audio video here, Alex from from Aaron Rodgers. Is that right? I have a video mm -hmm. from his exit press conference. Okay, and where he told the media. The reason the Jets were bad this year was mm. not because of Zach Wilson, but because of it's there's too much going on. Distractions. Here. There's too many distractions. So mm -hmm. this is Aaron Rodgers' post, his exit interview. Mm -hmm. Anything that doesn't have anything to do with winning needs to be assessed. So anything in the in the this building that we're doing individually or collectively that has nothing to do with real winning needs to be assessed. Everything that. Okay. He so, goes on. so he, he's saying, look, if it doesn't have to do with winning, it shouldn't be a part of what we're doing. But yet now I, I suppose the reason you brought that to us today is because now. Again, his, is the, does, again, does, is the word you're looking for. Does his name being associated with possibly running for vice president, does that help the jets win? No, is that, no, no, it, no. No. Yeah. Now, um, I see that we've got some of this Charles Barkley, Gail King, King Charles show mm -hmm. on CNN, where they were discussing Aaron Rodgers, who now, well, here, let, let's let this. Well, audio, first, we, well, yeah. first uh, CNN came up with a report yesterday, the reporter reporting on herself saying back in 2000, whatever, I had a conversation with Aaron Rodgers where he spewed. Sandy Hook elementary shooting conspiracy theories at me. And this was part of the report um, during the 2013 Kentucky Derby when Rogers with the, uh, with the green Bay Packers uh, Rogers immediately began attacking the news media for covering up important stories. Rogers brought up the tragic killing of 20 children, six adults at gunman at Sandy Hook elementary claiming it was actually a government inside job. And the media was intentionally ignoring it. When Brown questioned him, the reporter, on the evidence to show this very real shooting was staged, Rogers began sharing various theories that have been disproven numerous times. Such conspiracy theories were also later at the center of lawsuits brought by victims' families when they sued uh, conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. So, boy, I'll tell you, man, Aaron Rodgers has really, I mean, I thought he was a strange dude when he kind of like became completely estranged from his whole family. But all these conspiracy theories, um, I mean, a, a government inside job of a mass shooting at a school, bro. I mean, I've done no research on it. 
but I mean, come on, it, it just, that sounds so ridiculous. And on it to say that the, the same thing that Alex Jones was sued and lost for that. The, the parents were actors, that this was a government inside job. The parents are so, crisis actors. Right. So and they everything. didn't really get killed. Correct. Oh. Yeah. So everything that Alex Jones got sued for by the families and lost millions and millions of dollars, Aaron Rodgers was, was repeating as. I don't even know who Alex Jones is, by the way. I just don't even know. Good. Who that is. Keep well, it yeah. that way, man. Keep well, so, so what this is, is Charles so what... Barkley and Gail King talking about that, about mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers' beliefs on the Sandy Hook elementary school shooting. I think that other fool, Alex something. Alex Jones. Yes. Uh, lost some money. First of all, that is just, it's crazy. Yes, yes. And yes. anybody who thinks that, uh, you, you hope nobody ever thinks that. Yes. And you, it's just painful for the parents. And that's all I could think yeah. about is the pain that it but causes. But anybody who think that, I would think they would be insane. I, I'm not going to lie. You have to be insane to think that. And for the record, uh, Aaron Rodgers declined comment tonight, which also says to me, if somebody said that, that about me and I hadn't said anything well, I like bet he that, did decline. You... <laughs> so Aaron Rodgers <laughs> declined comment to them, but to this morning he went on Twitter because obviously it's been the number one thing that is, you search Aaron Rodgers, it's Sandy Hook. That's what's mm -hmm. coming up. It's mm -hmm. not anything other than that. So Aaron Rodgers posted this today. Um, as I'm on the record saying in the past, what happened in Sandy Hook was an absolute tragedy. I am not and have ever been of the opinion that the events did not take place. Again, I hope that we learn from this and other tragedies to identify the signs that will allow us to prevent unnecessary loss of life. My thoughts and prayers continue to remain with the families affected with the entire Sandy Hook community. Heart mm -hmm. emoji. Okay. Hashtag. So, P PR person wrote that. It's, mm -hmm. it's specifically time for the Jets to sit Aaron Rodgers down and say, hey, bro, no more talking. No more talking. That's it. Or or this, go run for vice president because we can't have this. This type of this level of you know chat about Aaron Rodgers, this is bad. And this is bad for football. This is bad for the Jets. You cannot have anybody in the NFL tied to anything of this nature. This is bad for business that you have a guy who someone is reporting to have said believes Sandy Hook was an a, a government conspiracy and people who have played with Aaron Rodgers in the quarterback room will tell you he is full of these. So it, you don't need this. The NFL doesn't need this. If you think, I know no, I'm not even gonna get into that, but what I will say is this, it's time yeah, for the no, Jets to don't care. Yeah. Right. It's time for the, just say, it's time for the Jets to sit down with Aaron Rodgers and say, that's enough of this, bro. You know what though, Browner, I'll take it a step further. It's not time for the Jets to do it. It's time for the Jets to call Roger Goodell and say, you need to do this. This is bad for the NFL. This is not yes. bad for the Jets. It's it's obviously bad for the Jets. It's bad for all of us. And, you know, hey, hey, look, you're a ball player and you may have opinions and you may have political aspirations. That's fine. It's got lots of those. But, but this is this is getting really bad. You know, it's getting uh, really in the uncensored portion, which is yeah coming up. I'll pull up an article. Y'all got a continuation of the story. OK. All right. So, hey, listen, uh, for those of you that are watching on Cox, your view, come to our YouTube channel, Kaplan and crew, and we'll continue this conversation. Stick around. All right, everybody, time to get uncensored all up in this. Uh, by the way, I just looked up who Alex Jones is. Yeah, I didn't know who he was. Oh, um, he th have. This guy right here, um, the picture that they show of him, this guy's four years younger than me. Mm -hmm. This fucking guy <laughs> looks. This fucking guy looks old as hell. One of the best memes ever. He was pre was uh he was promoting like um the weight loss pill or something like that or some sort of like yeah. pill and dietary took, supplement. He, dietary supplement, and he took a before picture. Mm -hmm. And he took an after picture. Motherfucker well, looks exactly the same, dude. No way. <laughs> so he's a he's like a a right wing crazy radio host. Is that right? He is as yeah, far down as the rest of the whole goals. He's at the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he's, yeah. a, he's not a person you yeah. need to familiarize yourself to with. To the point to where like he's been banned from every platform possible. Right. Yeah. He lost oh, a yeah. billion dollars because of this Sandy Hook thing. He had he a billion dollars. How do you have no. a fucking billion dollars? He he was at one point in time worth some money because at the height of Trump, a lot of he was at the beginning of the Trump thing. So when people talk about the the people who were around Trump, mm -hmm. the grifters, mm -hmm. this is this is number two behind Steve Bannon. Like this guy made a lot of money oh, during the Trump presidency speaking to these conspiracy theories. And 
he made money off that, but the Sandy Hook family have been suing him for a long time. I did I thought it was millions. It was 1.5 billion he lost in the yeah. Sandy Hook families. Dude, yes. Let me tell you something. To to yeah. to say to say these things to spread these these conspiracy theories. I don't know exactly what the Sandy Hook family sued him for. I don't know if it was slander, defamation of character. I mean, I literally all of the above. Idea. I have no idea, but but I'd be interested to read about it. But um, to uh, you lose a child in a mass shooting, man. Your your whole life, the rest of your life, every day. You know what you wake up thinking? What were what were the last thirty seconds of my kid's life? And there's just no resolution for you for the rest of your life because there's no answer, you know, other than sheer horror, you know. And so for this guy to do this, it's horrible. It's terrible. All right. So what was what were you going to show us about Aaron Rodgers? So Aaron Rodgers went on a podcast. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the person named Eddie Bravo. Eddie Bravo is a, a very, very renowned mixed martial artist, but gained mainstream fame by being on the Joe Rogan podcast a lot. Mm -hmm. to do to talk mma but then his personality kept coming out in all these episodes that he would do with joe rogan as a wild conspiracy theorist um to the point where like there's this one clip where he's just fucking going at something uh, some conspiracy thing and then rogan goes um is that true and eddie goes ah, i don't know look it up like that's kind <laughs> of like the guy that he is so now so and i, I swear know, to god that's up. a real clip like he's going after something and then he's joe rogan's like is that real and he goes i don't know look it up uh so he's got a podcast called look into it with eddie mm -hmm. bravo and aaron mm -hmm. Rodgers went on there uh to talk about all the conspiracy theories that aaron Rodgers believes in mm -hmm. and this is by awful announcing.com i saw this podcast like a few weeks ago and i almost decided to listen to it but i decided not to but awful announced he listened to it and mm -hmm. they they titled their article Here's all the dumb shit Aaron Rodgers recently said on a conspiracy theory podcast. Mm -hmm. And they put a list together of all the conspiracies that he had opinions on. Mm -hmm. So election fraud, the real Anthony Fauci, germ theory, restraint theory, the great awakening, the border, uh, all, all kinds of shit. I don't even know most of these conspiracy theories because I don't look into them. Mm -hmm. But they legitimately like went through the entire podcast. And this is all the crazy shit that Aaron Rodgers believes and was comfortable going public talking about. So you know what bothers me about this? Hold on. Oh, stop. Keep going. Oh, back, 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 please. Go back, please. Beep, beep. Um, go back. You 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 pass the sided poll. And I, I want to just have a second here to just hold it right there and keep the three of us on the screen. And I know you've got your ad blocker on because you're an ad blocker kind of guy, but that doesn't help us. You know, maybe you turn your ad blocker off for a second. What are you doing? Um, you know, I've always liked Aaron Rodgers. Of your ad blocker. I, I really always have liked Aaron Rodgers. And I'll, I'll tell you, the reason I've liked him is but. because, no, no, hold on. I, I've liked him because, you know, he's come here to San Diego. He used to live here. My, you guys know, my boy Van Pelt was his coach in Green Bay. Mm -hmm. In, uh, Alex would come out here to San Diego to just hang out with him because, you know, you had to suck up to the guy, you know. Alex became very close with him. Um, when I would, when I would go to Packer games, um, especially when I was working, Aaron Rodgers was always very good to me. Give me time face to face. He knew that me and Alex were tight. Um, so, you know, he was always good to me, hung out with him here in Del Mar. Um, I've never had these kinds of conversations with him. And again, this is going back several years. I like Aaron Rodgers. I want to like Aaron Rodgers. I always have liked Aaron Rodgers. You know what? He's making me hate him. And I know a lot of people have gotten there long before I got there. Remember, I thought Russell Wilson was cool for That's a long exactly time. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, and, and you guys were telling me how corny he is for the longest time. Yeah. And it took, me, it took me a long time to come over to corny. But we got I've you. I've liked Aaron Rodgers. Welcome. I've liked Aaron Rodgers for a long time. I'm, I'm, he's disgusting me right now. Mm. And, and I'll tell you right. I'll tell you another thing. You know, I have these friends up in Newport Beach that have a business with Aaron Rodgers. Um, and Aaron Rodgers used his fame and his money to incorporate other pro athletes and other famous people to put money into a fund so that they could go out and make money with their, their money. And I'm just starting to think that, you know, if you have business with him, you may not want to be in business with him anymore. It was cool at one time. Detach. It was cool. Detach. Yeah, but Look, he's... Man, he, the, the shit that these Sandy Hook families have had to deal with, people coming to their homes, people who listen to the Alex Jones program coming to their homes, telling them that they're actors after their child has been murdered is just it's utterly disgusting and for you to even as as a person who's the face of a franchise okay and a league he's a 
Uh, he's, a, he's one of the major faces of the NFL. For you to let this breathe for a second with your name attached to it, you should have gone on King Charles and had and sat down with him and went, hey, man, this is bullshit. I ain't never said nothing like that. That's a lie. That's a deep fake. That ain't me. Like, <laughs> what? Get this fucking guy. Full stop. Oh, full stop. Full stop. That ain't me. Man. That ain't me, man. You motherfucker. Just start <laughs> cursing and doing all types of crazy shit just to draw attention from that topic. Because all the other shit he says, cool, man, whatever. That's a difference of opinion to some people or whether Trump won or well, all that other shit's crazy, whatever, whatever. This Sandy Hook shit, stay the fuck away from that. Yeah, it's not stay cool. far, far away from that. That cuts too deep. That cuts too close. And that ain't... Come on, man. That's not Cut cool. this shit out. Yeah, it's not cool. And, you know, the reason Alex Jones got sued so much is because he went on his show every day and kept saying it and saying it and he saying it. He wouldn't stop saying it. So, like, Aaron Rodgers in a conversation in 2013 is a very different than what Alex Jones did. So, yes. I'll just say that. Yes. I'm not going to defend yes. Aaron Rodgers. You, you, but that there's a big difference between the two. Yeah. Uh, number one, you can have any opinion you want in this country. That's our right. Uh, number two, if you have an opinion, you also get to deal with those consequences of opinion. Right. We, Especially we when you're know, famous. We know that very well because yeah, I hate Jackson both Merrill. Ways. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> if Aaron Rodgers wants to run on a platform of conspiracy theories and anti-vaccine, then go for it. That's your right, right. bro. That, Correct. Like, that is great. That I don't More think anybody – I don't think anybody's telling him not to. Maybe the Jets, but – No, maybe the Jets uh, are starting to say you should go do it. Yeah. Yeah, yep. it is just it yeah. is just fun. oh by the Maybe. way, look at his this is from Sauce Gardner, the according to Brown is one of the best cornerbacks ever in the history of the NFL. Right. Uh Sauce Gardner. Oh, Aaron about to become the VP. That's why he ain't been answering my text messages. Nice. The Jets players, they're all in, man. Nice. Hey, they're go back in. to the awful announcing article for one second because I do want to make one quick comment that's very self serving, but fuck it. I'm gonna say well, it anyway. It, Paul. Yeah, because here's we'll why. Stop. Yeah, full stop. But it's really not. It's the same thing. So if you go to awfulannouncing.com and you click on any article, you will see the cited polls in there. Okay. And so for a lot of you guys who've asked me, hey, what happened to cited? I haven't heard you guys talking about it. It's mostly because really now it's a business to business offering. So if, if Alex, I can't even see the poll on this. I, I guess I'm going to try and enlarge my screen. Um, okay. Would you ever consider voting for vice president for Aaron Rodgers? Okay. Um, if you look at the bottom right corner and you click on cited, the bottom right corner of the poll, and you click on that, it'll take you to our site, okay? And I want you to do that for a quick second. And here's why. Because um, we are asking a question. We want to kind of get everybody's feedback on something. We've been working on something for a while. Um, Alex, I know you're the kind of guy that turns off push notifications on your phone. I use push notifications on my phone. And I probably have too many of them on. I just use them because I, I really want to research um, How's your phone not dead all the time? Oh, it, dude, it's it's ridiculous. It's so bad. Um but here's the thing we're we um, like if, if you went in here and you voted on this and you left a comment on this, we don't really have a way of notifying you when somebody else does. So we're working on adding that right now. So my question to everybody would be this. And it's it's actually on the cited website, which is why, Alex, if you could just oh. click on the bottom right corner. Sorry. OK, no, that's OK. If you go to the there is a question. This is like Alex's main feed right here. And this is the trending section. So I can see you're not signed in. But there's a question in here. Um, that is, we're building better notifications for cited. The question is, how do you want to get notified? App push notifications, email notifications, text no notifications, and then we have all of the above. I actually clicked on all of the above, but I really don't want text notifications. I only want, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to send me an email and I want you to send me an app push notification. And really, if I could have my choice, I would just have the app push notification. I wouldn't even have an email. But you see now we're kind of coming back to the consumer side of what this, this is all about. So, um, again, if you go to awfulannouncing.com, that is a, a one example, because I know a lot of our, our listeners probably read that website. If you go to awfulannouncing.com and you're in any article, you'll see the cited polls in there. So click on them, vote on them, comment on them, um, and then click the little cited uh, note in the bottom right-hand corner of the cited logo, and it'll take you to our, our aggregate website where all of the different publishers are, are there. So. A little self-serving, but uh, I would love to get everybody's feedback on how they want notifications. Do you have notifications on your phone, Browner? Absolutely not. Yeah. No, I don't <laughs> even get text messages. Oh, really? That's because yeah. we don't. None of us ever know your phone number. You're like Aaron Rodgers. You don't return texts because we don't know your phone number anymore. Hey, man. How embarrassing would it be I... though if, like, because you made me turn the ad blocker off? If I got mm -hmm. like Jason Whitlock right now, 
all of a sudden I turn my ad blocker on and it's like sex toys and fucking all this like porn <laughs> shit. <laughs> I didn't I don't know what happened to Whitlock. So uh, you're, you're telling me Yo, something that I don't shit know. Was so, Jason was went on Twitter dude. and blamed uh the liberals about all the shit that was coming up on his uh the ads he was getting yeah uh bombarded with. Yeah. It was all sex shit. It's like, bro, they yeah. do that from your browser history, my man. Yeah, it's called oh, cookies, bro. <laughs> yeah, Jason Whitlock. Yeah. Like right now, yeah. like right now, the majority of my ads all just is blenders. Like, so if I I use the FTP sites and yeah. the ads on the site, it's always blenders. Uh -huh. Can you imagine, like, if I was like searching porn on this, and all of a Dude. sudden I turn my eye blacker off, and it's just Dude, like... that is so funny. I I went to a buddy <laughs> of mine's house. I went to a buddy of mine's house the other day, and I go, uh, "Here, let me show you what this is." And I go to open my browser on my phone, and um, so the I the I click on the browser, and the first website that's on there is like you porn. I'm like, "Oops, wait a second, hold on, hold on a second here." Come on. He no. he goes <laughs> like this. He goes like this. He goes, I got to show you this new TV I got. So he shows me the TV and he's showing me this new TV service he has. And he goes to turn yeah. it on. And the first thing that's on it is like some porn channel. <laughs> so nice. Oh, by the way, I'm, as we're sitting here, I don't know what happened in Texas, but Pornhub no longer works in Texas. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that's, well, that's not good, not good for Texas. Pornhub just pulled out of Texas. Pulled out. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, that was a great headline by Joseph Cox. <laughs> Joseph Cox. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're ending on a high note. Peace out. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.